Atlantic Coast Conference football coming your way Saturday, November 22nd. The Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech takes on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Watch the ACC stars shine as head coach Bill Curry rallies his Yellow Jackets into action for their final conference matchup of the season. It'll be a battle for the final victory as star quarterback Mike Elkins once again leads his explosive Deacon offense. ACC football, Georgia Tech and Wake Forest, Saturday at noon. You're looking live at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The Tar Heels could still share the ACC title and go to a bowl. But to do it, they'll have to beat a maturing Virginia team that may still be on track for a big ACC future. A broken leg and a losing record have made this less than a banner season for Virginia football coach George Welsh. But despite the off year, Virginia still has weapons. Like the second all-time leading Cavalier passer, Don Mikowski. Mikowski has had to battle a bad shoulder for much of this his senior season. But he is still a quarterback capable of making the big play on any down. Lately, Mikowski has been complimented by a brand new Virginia weapon in the person of freshman fullback Derwin Greggs. Out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, Greggs combines great vision with sheer power and determination. And last week he had a big part in Virginia's conquest of previously magical North Carolina State. North Carolina's Dick Crum also is hobbling as his team struggles. But he has weapons too, like rangy tailback Derek Fenner, who's averaging better than 100 yards a game. The second leading rusher in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Fenner runs behind a huge offensive line, and he could well become the latest 1,000-yard Tar Heel tailback. Thanks to the return of standout quarterback Mark May, North Carolina has become prolific through the air, too. Once the nation's most sought-after prep quarterback, May has returned to form after a shoulder injury that set him back. And he combines with receivers like Tar Heel Quint Smith to give North Carolina a balanced offensive attack. With those weapons, two wounded football teams will look to salvage a season. Today is the Nissan Game of the Week as Virginia meets North Carolina. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions presents exclusive live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. Today, live from Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, it's the Virginia Cavaliers versus the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Company, helping to put a brighter face on the future. Delta, the airline of ACC country. Delta gets you there with care. Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Poland, America's chainsaw. First Wachovia, serving the financial needs of individuals and businesses in the Southeast and the nation. And by Nissan, where you can get a 1987 hard body truck with $630 worth of options at no extra charge. There are the Virginia Cavaliers. It has not been the kind of season for them they would have liked, but they looked good last week in knocking off North Carolina State. Three and six, well, they can make that look a lot more respectable with a win here today against North Carolina. And then in less than two weeks, they'll take on Maryland. George Welsh, both coaches hobbling today. There you see the Virginia head man. He has really done a nice job taking a Virginia program that was almost in shambles when he arrived. And although they don't have a good record this year, they have done well since he's been there. They are the North Carolina Tar Heels. That record better than Virginia's, but not as nice as North Carolina fans would like to have it, considering they started this season at 4-0-1. And, and there is the hobbling Dick Crumb under some pressure from the fans, to be sure right now. He can make up for that a bit with a win here today. Hi again, everybody. Gary Sparber along with Jack Corrigan. A rainy day here in Chapel Hill. And that's going to be one of the stories of this ball game. It is very wet out there. What can the teams do under these conditions? Well, we had some really torrential downpours earlier in the morning. It is getting mistier now, but certainly the field is soggy. And I think, Gary, the, the key factors we have to look at this afternoon, first of all, which team can dominate the line of scrimmage? Because on a soggy field, traction is going to be a big factor. And you know there are going to be turnovers this afternoon because of the wet conditions. 
So it's going to be the team that turns over the ball less frequently that's going to come out on top today. Certainly the North Carolina defense has been a mystery to a lot of people, including the coaches at Carolina. They simply have given up 30 points or more in each of the last five ball games. That won't get it done too often. Dick Crum does not know the answer why they have not gotten it done. He's made some changes defensively. He hopes that'll turn it around this afternoon. Well, they'll have to turn it around in the next few minutes because we're about ready to play ACC football. North Carolina and Virginia, the Tar Heels, still with a shot at a part of the ACC title. We'll be back. <laughs> As you can see, conditions are far from ideal here this afternoon. Jack, you mentioned turnovers. As you see, we're at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Turnovers and holding out of the football. All sorts of wacky things could happen before we're done. And this football field, because it has taken a lot of moisture, is going to dictate how people operate, particularly at the end of the stadium to our right, down along the near sideline. That tends to be a sloppier part of the field than any place else here at Keenan Stadium. So if you see either team, particularly Carolina, with a little local knowledge, down at that end of the stadium, look for them to keep in the middle of the field and move to their left because it's a little drier. The field also, excuse me, has a big crown, so you've got a lot of soft turf on both sidelines. And it's also colder here today, I think, than either team has dealt with this season. You're going to see some gloves tried out by both teams. We'll see how that might or might not affect play. There's Chuck Gaffney, the soccer-style kicker. Outstanding soccer player, but this year has been outstanding in a kicking role for Virginia. 11 of 15 field goals and done pretty well in his kickoffs as well. That's Torin Doran, the highly touted freshman out of Southfield, Michigan, a true freshman, as opposed to a redshirt one, and we are set to go. Remember, North Carolina, with a win, stays alive for a share of the league title. Doran moves up to take it at the 13. Has a little bit of a crease, but it closed up quickly. Eric Clay brought down Torin Dorn at the 34-yard line, and that is where North Carolina will start out a 21-yard return for the freshman. North Carolina offense with junior quarterback Mark May at the controls. May will have Torin Dorn starting at tailback. Derek Fenner will not get his starting nod, and James Thompson, the sophomore at fullback. Big offensive line headed up by left tackle Harris Barton. They do not have great Incrementius in at right tackle. He's had an ankle problem. First and 10 from the North Carolina 34. That's Eric Streeter at the bottom of your screen. Dangerous wide receiver for the Tar Heels. Might have been a mix-up on the first play. They get it to Streeter, and Streeter up to the 45-yard line. So whatever happened with the start of the play, they wind up with 11 yards, and Phil Thomas, the freshman linebacker, makes the stop for Virginia. It was not a busted play. It was the nose man as we take a look at the front line of Virginia. Judd Rupp, who get who took a little gap shot and hit Mark May, but May was able to get the ball up. Rayotas Perkins and Sean Scott, the top players on that defensive line. Two freshmen at linebackers, Thomas and Ray Savage. The secondary has senior Gould at one corner, but the other players are relatively newcomers as well. Cook, a true freshman. Clay and Mike Petten, the safeties. Petten, of course, the hero last week with the three interceptions. They got 10 yards on the play, and after the measurement, it's a first down for North Carolina. There you see the officiating crew, Bob Carpenter, heading up the group. We saw the Tar Heels a few weeks ago against Maryland show us a very balanced attack where they throw on first down, run on first down. They've been criticized at times in the Dick Crum years for being too conservative. We'll see how they operate this afternoon against Virginia. First and ten from about their 45, the Tar Heels with the football. First carry for Torin Dorn, and he got through the hole quickly, fumbled the football, and I think it was Kevin Cook, the freshman who came up with it. Virginia gets the turnover. We talked about what it would be like handling that football. Kevin Cook, the true freshman out of the Cleveland, Ohio area, falls on the loose football. Dorn jumps through the hole quickly, but as he was shedding a tackle, Sean Scott and Ray Savage hitting him, the ball popped free, and Cook happened to be the man on the spot for Virginia, the first of what is going to be a very big stat throughout the afternoon. Turnovers. No question about that. Don Mikowski, the quarterback, has it on his 43. First and 10, the initial Virginia possession. Pat Toland is the fullback starting for Derwin Greggs, who has an injured ankle. Mikowski on the roll. And the pass is thrown behind the fullback, Pat Toland, incomplete. It will be second and 10. The Virginia offense, led by that guy right there, number one, senior quarterback, Don Mikowski. Antonio Rice will play at tailback along with 
Kevin Morgan. Pat Tolan starting for Derwin Greggs at fullback, but Greggs will play. Ford and Mattioli, the wide receivers. The offensive line headed up by right guard Chris Manier. He's been their best blocker in recent weeks. Toland is the man right behind the quarterback, McCaskey. He gets the football and a good defensive play there by Reuben Davis cutting through to mess up the play and then Carlton Bailey in on the tackle. They got about two yards, bring up a third down and eight from the 45. Virginia had very good success with that play last week against NC State. It's a little bit of a delay handoff. It's a trap action in front, and the fullback, Greggs, last week popped through for big yard, and Toland found it a little more difficult there on his first try. Toland has been an up-and-down player for Virginia this year. They'd like to have Greggs in there, but as we told you, he's got the bad ankle. On the option pitch, a fumble by Virginia, and North Carolina gets the football right back in great field position at the 34 of the Cavaliers. We anticipated Virginia wanting to run the option because Clemson ran it so well. I tell you what, though, it looked like Mikowski got rid of that ball a little quicker than he probably should have. Third time this season that Brett Rudolph has recovered a fumble for the Tar Heels, so instead of an exchange of punts, we've had an exchange of fumbles. We'll be back. We're scoreless in the first period at Keenan Stadium. We expected Virginia to run the option, but Don Mikowski with that injured shoulder is hesitant about running this option as much as he did earlier in the season, and that, quite frankly, was just a bad pitch. Antonio Rice had no chance. Looked like he lost the handle. North Carolina with it on the 34 of Virginia. First and 10. Corin Dorn was hit behind the line of scrimmage and then moved forward for about two yards. It was Phil Thomas, the linebacker, who got him around the legs behind the line of scrimmage, tripping him up. It'll be about second down and eight yards to go. We talked about it last week, but it bears repeating. Those two freshman linebackers, Phil Thomas, a true walk-on from Houston, Texas, and Ray Savage, the high school All-American from Newport News, have been a surprising plus for George Wells this year. If you're wondering about Derek Fetter, we expect to see him this afternoon. Torin Dorn has just been coming on very strong for the Tar Heels in practice. Fetter had a good game last week. This is Torin trying to get around the corner and Briggs made the stop. David Briggs, the sophomore out of Pensac in New Jersey, made some big plays in the game we had last week for Virginia against North Carolina State. Virginia has an extremely young defense right now because of injuries and academic problems and other factors. Griggs, one of 16 freshmen or sophomores on the defense of two deep, did a good job of stringing that play out in there with Thomas to make the stop. Virginia has only two starting seniors on defense, Rayotis Perkins and Kevin Gould. Tar Heels have had good field position each time they've had the ball. They have a third down and seven, though, here. Thompson and Dorn behind Mark May. May has time and has Schroeder, but the pass was thrown down low and could not be handled by the receiver. Mike Petton covering on the play. What a day Petton had last week. Three interceptions tying a Virginia school record all in the last five minutes of the game, the victory against State. May's first look was to his backside. He hoped to get Randy Marriott, who was one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Cook on a post pattern. But Cook had pretty good coverage. He went back to Streeter on the crossing pattern underneath and just didn't get the ball there. So it's fourth down. The Virginia defense has held. And they're going to try a long field goal. And Kenny Miller, who is the long field goal specialist, is on for Carolina with Mark May to hold. This will be a 48-yard try. He's got the distance. And the kick is good. Kenny Miller, who was one for two on long tries, is now two for three. And North Carolina draws first blood. So the exchange of fumbles gave Carolina decent field position. And Kenny Miller is showing the Tar Heel fans he's got a pretty good leg. He allows the Tar Heels to get three points on the board. They lead it 3-0 here at Keenan Stadium. Back after this for your local ACC stations. 3-0 North Carolina on the 48-yard field goal by Kenny Miller. And Miller, who does double duty, also as the kickoff specialist, will boot it off to Virginia. Didn't take very long. Just four plays. They only gained two yards, but when your man can kick at 48, you don't need a whole lot. Well, they got the good kickoff return, and then the initial first down, and then, quite frankly, a good run by Dorn before he fumbled the ball. Sort of gave Carolina the field position advantage, and then when Virginia fumbled it back to Carolina, they were already in scoring territory, and even without making the first down, they come away with some points. I've got to believe field position is going to be a key all day because you're going to have turnovers. You'd much rather turn it over in good field position than back in your own end. 
Virginia will get the football. The Cavaliers probably not all that distraught, though, because their defense has had problems all year. As you look at Dick Crum, and they have stopped the Tar Heels on their first two possessions. Only the long field goal got Carolina on the board. North Carolina State off quickly against Duke. The Wolfpack in almost the same situation as the Tar Heels. Eric Kramer did start this afternoon for the Wolfpack. In fact, they said yesterday he practiced uh, without a limp, which is very encouraging for Wolfpack fans. That's Chris Warren back deep to receive for Virginia. He is the number one all-purpose runner in the ACC, number six nationally. Miller boots it off low, handled nicely by Finkelston at the 15. Tim Finkelston, a wide receiver, gets up to the 35-yard line. Tackle was made by Bill Franklin, a freshman defensive back out of Cincinnati, Ohio, a 21-yard return. They elect to kick the ball away from Chris Warren and Tim Finkelston, who is a walk-on for the Virginia program, found a little seam and pushed it upfield pretty nicely. So the Cavaliers have good field position to start this drive. Derwin Greggs is in the game now at fullback. Kevin Morgan is the tailback. They gave him a kickoff return progress to the 36. That's John Ford in motion. This is Morgan, and there was nowhere to go. Tim Goad did what the nose guard is supposed to do, and that is plug up the middle. So did Mitch White, who came through and put a little pressure on that Virginia offensive line, and Morgan just had no territory in which to operate. They got a yard. It'll be second down and nine for Virginia. We told you Greggs has a little bit banged up ankle. He has had fantastic games the last two weeks. Second down, only a little less than the full ten. This is Morgan again with Greggs leading the way. Carlton Bailey, who has good speed for a defensive lineman, came across and brought him down. It'll be third and long. Keep an idea here on what North Carolina is trying to do in terms of the option. They want to stretch it out, have people come up from the secondary. That's Jim Yawk, who is a sophomore, getting his first start at right quarterback. Carolina last week against Clemson really had problems on the outside with run support from the secondary. Third down and nine. That is Ford in the slot at the top of your screen. Mikowski has time and completes his pass to Keith Mattioli at the 46-yard line of North Carolina. First and 10 for Virginia. Derek Donald on the stop. Mattioli, the leading receiver, his 37th catch of the season. As you watch Mikowski here, they said... John Ford up the middle of the field. That throws the linebacker and the safety man, and it enabled Mattioli to come down in front of Howard Beggins and catch the pass to keep the, Carol, uh, to keep the Virginia drive going. They got 18 yards on the play. Mattioli, another far walk on for Virginia. First and ten. First carry for Derwin Griggs. Ruben Davis made the stop. And I think Virginia's finding out what they thought they'd find out, but it's tougher running against North Carolina up front than North Carolina State. Well, it's a much bigger defensive line than they faced last week. Ron Burton, Tim Gold, Ruben Davis, and Carlton Bailey. That's some big people. Davis, a 275-pounder. So is Goad. Rudolph and White step up nicely out of their linebacker spots, and Walter Bailey, when he is on, is all over the field. Second down, eight. Good protection again, and there's nowhere to run for Kevin Morgan, who took the flare pass. Again, it was, well, this time it was Howard Fagan, again, Carlton Bailey involved in the tackle. We talked uh, a few moments ago about the necessity of the outside and deep people putting pressure on the run part of the offense. So basically a swing pass is, is, is the same kind of philosophy, and Fagans came up quickly from strong safety to do the job there. See what they do on third and ten. Mikowski to Ford, and Ford could not hang on. Now, a moderately difficult catch, yes, but Ford has had trouble hanging on to the football this year. It's been a disappointment for John personally and for Virginia that he has not had the consistency he has wanted to have in terms of catching the football. But he is such an electrifying player, Gary. you just got to keep going to him and hope that the, the pluses outweigh the minuses. Joel Dempsey has kicked 10 punts inside the opponent's 20 in the last six games. He has a possibility of doing it again here. He has really improved as the season's gone up. This is a shorter kick, and what a pop that was. Eric Lewis caught the punt 26 yards on the kick. Darryl and Daryl Hammond, yeah, oh. was the one who laid the wood to him. Joe Carter on the tackle. 
The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Virginia with or North Carolina with the football now starting from their 20-yard line after the short punt. James Thompson, the fullback, will carry, and he ran right through an attempted tackle in the secondary and got up to the 31-yard line. Mike Penton, the free safety, had him, but Thompson is a big load to bring down, and he ends up with a first down. Well, in Thompson, you have a guy built along the same lines as Derwin Gregg's for Virginia. Thompson, a 5'11", 225-pounder. If you allow guys built like that to get up ahead of steam, they are most difficult to bring down. First and 10, Virginia at their 31. It's 3 nothing North Carolina midway through the first period. Mark May, quarterback. This is Derek Fetter's first carry. And Fetter drives into the secondary and got another first down before Eric Clay brought him down. Derek Fenner, who is on his way to a 1,000-yard season despite missing one ball game this year, was not in the starting lineup this afternoon because he was tardy to practice a couple of days this week. And obviously, Derek didn't like uh, standing on the sidelines to begin the action. And in his first carry, he moves the chains further upfield for Carolina. Tough series for Mike Pett. First Thompson pulled by him, and Fenner put a great move on him on that play. Another first down. May still has the football. Right on the left of Eric Streeter, and that will be another North Carolina first down. Three plays on this series and three first downs. Kevin Gould on the tackle, 13 yards on the play. This was a very slow developing play action by Carolina, but on the rollout, May had enough time. The deep curl route by Streeter. Eric Clay, the strong safety, was up on the line of scrimmage, and that's what created the space for Streeter to make the catch. North Carolina moving smartly on this drive. The fullback, James Thompson, is hit and brought down by the linebacker, Ray Savage, but he got five yards. Virginia, because of their inexperience on defense, George Wells told us yesterday, has been forced to be a little more conservative, a little more basic defensively. In fact, he said, we've eliminated just about one defensive front totally because of the inexperience. That makes the job easier for the offensive line. Not bad when you consider Mark May this the first part of the season. Second and six for Carolina. Fenner once again. Pretty good block from the center, Jeff Garnica, and got up close to a first down as a result. Ray Savage again on the stop. To elaborate on the point I was just talking about, if the defensive line stays fairly basic in the same defensive front each time, you're not putting pressure on adjustments by the offensive line. They come out there and they go, all right, this is the guy I'm going to block this time. And for that reason, it becomes more of a physical matchup man-on-man, man, strength against strength, and when you do that against an offensive line like North Carolina, you got to give the Tar Heels the advantage because they've got a huge offensive line. Very tough assignment for the defensive line of Virginia now. Third down and less than a yard against that big, hulking offensive line. Better fumble the football, and Virginia has it back. Third fumble of the game, and the Cavaliers dodge this bullet. John Scott... The junior linebacker on the outside comes up with the ball, and that's the kind of thing we're going to see all afternoon. Carolina controlling the football here. Fenner has the first down, and David Griggs coming over from his left defensive end popped the ball free. Scott comes up with it for Virginia. They stop the Carolina drive. Third fumble recovery of the season for Sean Scott. It's 3-0 North Carolina when we come back. It has rained since early this morning here in Chapel Hill. It got very hard around 11 a.m. It slackened off some, and it is cold. 38 degrees, but you've got that chill wind coming in on you. Oh, what are you talking about? It is cold. You're wearing a sweater. <laughs> what were you telling me about those long woolies you got today? Well, that's because I'm used to this. All right. First down and 10 from the 32. Don Mikowski trying to get some points on the board. This is Kevin Morgan. Morgan gets by Norris Davis. Morgan by midfield and into North Carolina territory. Taken out of bounds at about the 44-yard line, a 22-yard gain for Kevin Morgan, and the tackle was made by Jim Young. Virginia wants to attack the outside against North Carolina. They were very susceptible to the outside run last week against Clemson. Kevin Morgan broke a few tackles and turned it upfield before Donald and Yauk ran him out of bounds. First down for the Cavaliers at the 46 of North Carolina. 
This is Derwin Gregg. Gregg just didn't have any room. He's going to find the going a lot more difficult today up the middle than it was last week. Well, Virginia added that little fullback trap play last week as a new play in their offense, and North Carolina State could not handle it at all. Carolina scouts that game. They look at the film. They're ready for it, plus they're a bigger defensive line. It has not worked in three tries this afternoon for Virginia. Virginia felt one of the keys to its win was blocking nose guard Sandy Key of State. They haven't been able to do it to Ruben Davis so far today. Not a whole lot there for the fullback who got about two or three yards, Derwin Greggs, and it will be third down and long, the tackle made by Ron Burton and Tim Goad. Virginia, if it was a drier afternoon, would certainly be trying to attack the perimeter a little more, thereby setting up that inside game. But when they start on first down with the inside run, don't get anything. And same with second down. Boy, you hate to be in third and nine setups too often. But that's what they have right now, third and nine from the 43 of North Carolina. Protection is good. Now the pass be flushed down, and down he goes. Carlton Bailey. And Bailey, who is their quickest pass rusher, finally got his first sack of the season. He's had a bunch of pressures. This is a sack that belongs to the secondary, really. They just had great coverage downfield. Bukowski, under normal circumstances, had enough time to throw the ball, but there was nobody to throw it to, and he gets sacked by Carlton Bailey. Eric Lewis back deep to receive the punt of Joel Dempsey. North Carolina's defense holds the Tar Heel fleet at 3 0. We have six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Lewis from the 11. Got as much as he could back to the 20-yard line. Nine-yard punt return after a 40-yard kick and the tackle made by Daryl Hammond for Virginia. As you look at the punter, Dempsey. North Carolina three, Virginia nothing. The Tar Heels will have the ball back when we come back after this. Three nothing North Carolina, 5.46 to go in the first quarter. Greg Murden was shaken up on the play for Virginia. Looks like it's a shoulder or some kind of arm problem on the right side. As they cover the punt, Carolina starts its new drive just beyond its own 20-yard line. James Thompson is the fullback. Derek Fenner, the tailback for Mark May, has gone all the way at quarterback for North Carolina. This is Fenner. Fenner is tripped up at about the 27-yard line. He got six, David Griggs, on the tackle. The thing coaches don't like about Fenner, the opposition, that is, he leans forward and gets two extra yards. Well, that, that also makes him susceptible to the hit on the ball for the fumble, as happened on Carolina's last possession. But most coaches try and get the guy carrying the ball to have that forward lean to always be making forward progress, and Fenner can do that. Second down four for the Tar Heels. Eric Streeter at the bottom of your screen. Fenner again. Not much. The linebackers filled the gap that time. Ray Savage on the stop, and I think they got the first down at the 32. Yes, they did. We mentioned a very big offensive line for North Carolina. Harris Martin, their All-American candidate at left tackles, a 280-pounder. Daryl Hamilton, the sophomore at right tackle, 270 pounds. Ralph Pfeiffer or Steinbacher, whichever of those two guys is in a guard. They're another pair of big boys. First and ten for North Carolina. Fenner doing much of all carrying now. Breaks into the open. He's going to put him Fenner. Fenner's yard line. And Fenner. Can he score or will he out of bounds? Touchdown, North Carolina. Derek Fenner all the way for 68 yards. John Scott made a valiant effort to catch him. But Fenner was able to keep his balance long enough to fall into the end zone. He's going to give you some problems here and there, but there's little question he's got an awful lot of talent. Well, we talked before the game. Fenner, but he missed practice a couple of days this week. Yeah, he's late to practice. Late to practice. They're unhappy with him. He missed a plane earlier this season, but when he gets on the when they get him on the football field, he gets the job done pretty well. League Learmas will look to have the extra point with Mark May holding. It's 9 0 North Carolina right now. A man back to 10 0. 
Well, if you are controlling the line of scrimmage and you put Derek Fenner into the secondary, it's a physical mismatch. Good block by James Thompson on the lead on linebacker Phil Thomas, and now you've got Fenner in the open field. They turned around Kevin Cook with a block downfield by Eric Street. A great effort by Sean Scott. Look at the balance of Fenner. Got hit at the five, still kept his feet and dove into the end for the touchdown. He has got 100 yards rushing now in the afternoon and just 22 yards away from a 1,000 yard season. He had over 200 yards in the opening game of the season against the Citadel. How about the speed of Sean Scott on that play? A defensive lineman actually closed ground and almost tripped up there. You saw right there Derek Fenner, as you look at his numbers, put the congratulatory hug on James Thompson, his fullback. That was just a straight lead play. Man-on-man -man blocking up front. The fullback's job is to lead through the hole and stuff the linebacker, and he stuffed Bill Thomas. Great block by Thompson. Well, Derek Fenner has stood open to 10 nothing. Still 435 to go in the first period. Kenny Miller will boot it off for the Tar Heels. Chris Warren back deep to receive it. Warren moving over. Will not take it, though. Finkelstein will have his second return. He started at the 9, and he finished in the arms of Jim Young at the 26. So that's a 17-yard return. Even though we still have 427 to play here in the first quarter, it's starting to get to be tough decision time for Virginia. Because of the weather conditions, you cannot allow Virginia to fall more. You cannot allow yourself, being Virginia, to fall too far behind here because the field's going to make it more and more difficult to come back. It's Derwin Greggs and Kevin Morgan behind Don McCaskey, and Virginia starts from its 26, now trailing 10 nothing. Morgan and Carlton Bailey's had a good first period. Bailey with another tackle. Virginia is going to be forced to throw the football here. Gary, this is the decision I was talking about. Here early on, Carolina is saying, we are going to force you to throw the ball. We're going to deny you your running game. You're going to have to show us that you can throw the football. North Carolina has not beaten Virginia since four years ago. Two victories at a time for the Wahoos in the last three years. Second down, 13. Again, Carlton Bailey putting pressure on. And Mikowski run out by Tim Goad. It'll be about third and 15. They are just dominating the line of scrimmage. Carolina has been susceptible to the pass this year. They are giving up exactly 400 yards a game on an average. But 240 of that has been through the air to 160 on the ground. And so they're really saying that they're going to deny the run and you're going to have to beat us with the pass and it's tough in this kind of weather. Pass rush is always part of it. Carolina's only had one sack in the last four games. They may get another here. McCaskey just can't get it off. And down goes Morgan at the 22-yard line. Great defensive series for North Carolina. The linebackers, Brett Rudolph and Leonard Dempsey covering up there. Watch Tim Goad. It was a little X done inside. Goad, the nose man, lined up to the left of Mikowski and then rushed to his right and came in untouched and nearly came up with a sack. Joel Dempsey has worse field position to punt from than he's had today. Eric Lewis is back at his 45. There he is. Lewis, one of the top punt returners in the league. In fact, he is the top punt returner in the league statistically right now. He's had an 84-yarder for a touchdown earlier. Virginia won the toss in this ball game and deferred, hoping that they would get the advantage of field position. It has not worked out that way for the Cavaliers. Still raining has been all day here in Chapel Hill. It's gotten a little bit warmer. Lewis has room to run at his 40. Flag is down as Lewis goes down up near midfield. And now another flag goes down. And we'll wait to see how they... All that action in midfield, Gary, is going to be of no consequence because they rough Joel Dempsey. They tried for a middle block, and Tim Goad just couldn't veer off his path, and he banged into Dempsey. It would only be, I think, the five-yard infraction 
Well, a second flag is down. I believe this will go against the same team, which would mean the block would, uh, the roughing the kicker would be enforced. Let's see. You could get offsetting penalties First in the snow. foul on the blue and clip on the blue. Yeah, that's what, that's what I mean. You're not going to get offsetting here because you have two fouls against North Carolina. That should give Virginia a first down. Well, they called it a personal foul, so that would be the 15-yard more serious version of it. And they had about fourth and 14. Yeah, they, they, they came right into the kicker, Joel Dempsey. They were going for a middle block after putting pressure from the outside the previous two punts. They come up the middle this time. And Tim Goad and, oh, it was actually... Skeet Baldwin, who banged into Tim Goad and then into Joel Dempsey. Boy, I'll buy it. A flag goes down, but I don't know about 15 yards. State still leading Duke by a touchdown, and State, of course, can share the ACC title if they win and Clemson loses. That's a tough call, Jerry, when you decide to be the five-yard penalty or the 15-yard penalty. And I don't know necessarily the criteria that the officials use in that judgment, but they went with a 15-yarder and gives Virginia the first down a much better field position. At their 37-yard line, it's 10 nothing North Carolina, 2.57 to go, first quarter. Right ahead goes Pat Toland up to the 41-yard line. He got four. Second down at about six. Ron Burton on the stop for North Carolina. Well, we talked about the option plans of Virginia, but to make the wide game operate, you have to at least a couple of times give that fullback the football when you are running that belly option. They gave it to Toland that time, and he picked up four yards. Second down, six for the Wahoos. Don McCaskey, quarterback, will probably see Scott Seacules as well before the day is over. A counterplay, and Tolan bangs into a couple of Tar Heels. He'll be about two or three yards shy of a first down. Leonard Dempsey in on the tackle. Keep an isolated look if we can. Uh, Tim Goad, the nose man for North Carolina, as he has been a guy who has wreaked havoc against a lot of running games this year. They try and double-team him to wall off that left side of the Carolina defense. They did a pretty good job that time. Tim Morris and John Fetzko blocking. This is a third down and two play. And a great catch and a first down for the Cavaliers. Keith Mattioli. A nice reception by Mattioli. Athletic move is the ball was thrown where he had to really adjust to it and got the first down, a 12-yard reception. Mattioli, the senior from Chantilly, Virginia, was a walk-on at one point for the Cavaliers. You get into these kind of conditions, you tell receivers not to catch the ball with their body. A day like today, you make an exception. In Raleigh, Bobby Crumpler has scored a couple of touchdowns for North Carolina State. Mikowski to John Ford. Did Ford get it inbound? Yes. Remember, in college football, you need only one foot inbound, and that's all he had. First down, Virginia. We talked about John Ford having the kind of talent to break a game open, so you keep going to him, even when you're struggling. And Ford made a great adjustment to catch that ball. Got the one foot in in front of Jim Yawk and gets the first down inside the Carolina 20. That was an excellent adjustment on the ball by John Ford. A 27-yard reception by Ford. First and 10. This is Tolan down in the backfield, and he got a good seven yards on first down. It'll be second and three, taken out by Antonio Goss. Goss, a sophomore out of Rambleman, North Carolina, who backs up Walter Bailey at the Ramback spot. Isn't it amazing how momentum shifts in this, in this game? Virginia gets the third down on the nice effort by Mattioli. Now, all of a sudden, a little bit of confidence in the passing game. Two more completions in a row, and they're knocking on the door. They got eight yards, second down and two. Pat Tolan gets the first down, I think. Yeah, he'll have the first down at the seven-yard line. First and goal for Virginia. Junior linebacker Brett Rudolph stepped into the hole and was right there, but he could not break down Pat Tolan. Tolan, the sophomore out of New Jersey, goes at about 225 pounds. He shed the Carolina linebacker and pushed it down to about uh, just inside the seven-yard line. First and goal from there. What I said, though, Gary, Virginia could not allow Carolina to extend the lead more than 10 points. About a minute to go in the first quarter. Toland is hit hard by Mitch White. He fumbled the football, and who's going to get it? North Carolina says they have it. We wait for the official indication. Very big decision here as far as Virginia's concerned, and the Carolina Tar Heels come up with the football. 
a very ill-timed turnover by Virginia. Ron Burton comes up with the ball. They stop Nolan's progress right here. The ball squirts out. Mitch White on the hit, and Ron Burton just beat Tim Morris to the football. And Carolina thwarts the best scoring attempt from the afternoon for George Welsh's Cavaliers. Well, you think it's tough being a coach in this league? We've got one in a wheelchair, one on crutches, and two banished from the field today. It's a tough job. First and ten at the seventh. Mark made it Derek Fenner, and David Griggs got just enough of Fenner and waited until he got help. About a yard gain, it'll be second and nine. Virginia right now from a defensive point of view has to get into a three and out situation here. They've got to stop Carolina here, force Carolina to punt from deep in their own territory and get good field position. That would get them over the hump of the disappointment of blowing a scoring drive for Carolina. If they move the ball out again, they could really put Virginia into a desperate situation. Randy Marriott, the wide receiver at the top of your screen. May looking that way, he goes underneath to John Keller, and Keller gets a first down after the 19-yard line. Keller, his tight end, and Ray Savage, the linebacker, on the tackle. Good play action by Mark May. He likes to throw to his left when he rolls out. Plenty of time to throw the ball, and Keller, the linebacker, uh, Keller slipped out past the linebacker, Ray Savage, and picked up the first down. Gives North Carolina some breathing room as you look at the sophomore. Dave Truitt is a little bit banged up, so Keller getting the start, but he's received the ball well for North Carolina this season. This is Derek Fenner picking his way before Eric Clay brought him down at the 26. He got six yards, second and four. That'll wrap things up here for the first period. North Carolina dominating behind Derek Fenner, and a 10 to nothing advantage as the homestanding heels in good shape. Virginia had a chance, but they fumbled the football deep in North Carolina territory. North Carolina by 10 with the second period coming up. Your Nissan game of the week and North Carolina leading Virginia 10-0. We're at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill and some very, very good news for North Carolina fans as number 27, Brad Lopp, there you see him, the fullback who's had the shoulder separation that's kept him out the past three or four weeks has made his way back into the line. Well, particularly from the point of view of blocking, he does an excellent job in the lead blocking role in front of Derek Fenner. Second down four for North Carolina. Lop has Derek Fenner behind him. Mark May still in quarterback. The pitch to Fenner. Fenner cut inside of Kevin Cook and got up to the 30-yard line where he should have a first down. Jimmy Sanford in the ball game now at linebacker. Unfortunately, Mr. Sanford got the same medicine that his predecessor, Phil Thomas, got in the first quarter, a crunching block from the fullback on the lead play. That time it was Lop who dumped Sanford and enabled Fenner to scoot outside for some yardage. You don't get a break whether it's Lop or Thompson. Either way, look at that yardage rushing in the first period for North Carolina. They've totally dominated. Although Virginia had a chance before fumbling. First and ten. And the play action. This is for Eric Streeter, and it's going to be picked off. Mike Pittman has his fourth interception in two weeks. He had three in the fourth quarter last week, and he gets one here. That ball was simply underthrown. They had Randy Marriott behind Kevin Cook, but either Cook or Pett could have come up with this interception as Mark May got a little bit too much air under this ball, and it hung up. You can see Cook and Petten there. Marriott had fallen down, and Mike Petten has been on uh, quite a tear of late, making Eric Streeter rather than Randy Marriott, excuse me. But it's a break for Virginia. 34-yard line of the Wahoos, first and 10. It's 10-0 North Carolina. Mikowski takes. Antonio Rice has nowhere to go. Ruben Davis, Mitch White, and Carlton Bailey, who's been in on every play. It'll be second and ten. Virginia's in a situation here, Gary, I feel, with the exception of maybe running the fullback off the option play, that they have got to set up their running game by throwing the football first. I don't think they can go the normal route that coaches like of running to set up the pass. I think they have to reverse it. Second down and ten. 34-yard line of Virginia. Wide open and through the hands, just a little bit overthrown for Matty Ole. 
He was out there. Walter Bailey on the coverage, but Mattioli had that Tar Heel secondary beat. The read that time for Don Mikowski as Mattioli ran the fly pattern up the sidelines is the safety, Walter Bailey. He was concerned about Bailey being there to break up the play, so rather than putting a little more loft on the ball, he threw it on the line, and Mattioli just couldn't get there in time. Mikowski is 6 of 8 for 63 yards. He hit one day with the top four. Ten. And overthrown intended for Tim Finkelston. Maybe he could have caught the football, but it would have been an outstanding grab. It'll be fourth down. Just what I alluded to a few moments ago, Gary. Virginia has got to throw more on first down. Hope they can get some yardage and set up second and short situations or move the chains for first down. They are not getting the running yardage on first down, setting up second and long, third and long. And you just can't operate that way and be successful, particularly under these kind of conditions. Lewis waiting for the kick of Joel Dempsey. It's 10 0 North Carolina, 13 41 to go in the first half. They set up the return. A floater that Lewis should be able to bring back at least a bit. And Lewis is really smacked after a 10 yard return. Number 47, Antonio Rice on the tackle. So watch the kick coverage of Virginia. Lewis did a nice job of stepping around the first man, got through the initial wave. Watch Antonio Rice. Boom! What a hit. 13.30 to go first half. 10 nothing. North Carolina. We're at Keenan Stadium and coming back after this. Gary Sparber with Jack Corrigan. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions ACC football. North Carolina with the football. They've scored on every other possession and this is the other possession. We'll see if it keeps up. They're at the 41. This is Derek Fenner. Running behind the great block of James Thompson. Got a first down. Inside midfield and into Virginia territory before Mike Petton, the free safety, made the stop. When Virginia has tried to run wide, the Carolina defense has strung it out. When Carolina has run wide. They have been able to turn the corner. And Derek Fenner, who is well over 100 yards, bounds out for nine. They'll say he went out at midfield, so it will not be a first down. Second down and one. Fenner, first down. And then written down by David Briggs at the 44-yard line of the Cavaliers. Tackle by David Briggs. <laughs> you were right, Gary. North Carolina has either turned the ball over or scored, and since they turned the ball over on their last possession, logic would dictate that this is a scoring drive, and the first two plays are an indication of good movement by the Heels. First and ten at the 44-yard line of the Cavaliers. Mark made a throw. Eric Streeter at the 28-yard line of the Cavaliers, and Petten brought him down at about the 27. Outstanding protection for Mark May. He's got lots of time to let Eric Streeter come down and run the pattern underneath the deep coverage and over the linebackers. Petten and Cook are there, but they've got to respect the deep threat. The linebackers just aren't giving enough underneath coverage for Virginia. North Carolina got 17 yards on that play. This is James Thompson, and Thompson is hit after a gain of about two or three. It will be second down and seven. When you have some success running the football, as Carolina has this afternoon, then the play action is very effective because it keeps the linebackers in place for a while, prevents them from getting a deep drop into the zone coverage, and then when you throw the ball to people like Streeter, they've got all kinds of room between the zones. Second and seven from the 23 of Virginia. Penner. All the way to the 17, he got another six yards, and they may have to measure for a first down. Jim Sanford made his tackle second consecutive Kenner. tackle. Take a look at Derek Fenner on an isolated camera. Look at him picking his way through the holes. I think that was a great shot there of talking about a running back with vision. You can see him sort of keeping the motor in idle until he found the proper space and once he saw the hole then he accelerated and got good yardage. Hey, James Thompson's been laying some good lead blocks on the Cavaliers. Third and two, better. I don't think, well, we'll see. I said third and two, it was actually about tackle third and one. David Briggs. David Briggs made the tackle and we'll wait until they unpile. 
They tried to run a little counter action there, and David Griggs didn't buy the counter at all. He knew that Fenner was going to run the football, and he really scraped from the backside defensive end to drop Fenner shy of the first down. Leading 10 0, Dick Crum, who has been somewhat field goal conscious in the past, says, Let's take a shot. Fourth down and less than one. Now, if he doesn't make it, the fans will say, Well, why didn't you kick the field goal? <laughs> Here they do on fourth and short. May tries to speak for it. I don't know. They had to get inside the 12 yard line to pick up the first down. Or the, uh, the 16, uh, 17, 16 yard line. Hard to say. If you're not guessing, I know it's hard to say. Well, I had to wait for them to unfile to see them set down the football. It's still hard to tell. Yeah, you're right. We're back at about the 45 yard line. We do not have a good angle at all on this one. You know, so many times North Carolina has had leads this season. I think Dick Crum is thinking, well, we've got the lead. Let's try to just put this team out of business for once. Well, you're also in a situation here with weather conditions. You're going to take your chances trying to pick up the first down here because you may have more problems trying to kick a field goal, particularly since you've got a different deep snapper. He didn't get it. Hmm. Big play for the Virginia defense. The Cavaliers will start from the 17. Billy Keys, who, pay, who comes in in short yardage in one of the tackle spots, was a guy leading the way there for Virginia. So the Cavaliers hold inside their 20. Now, fans, come on. No second guesses on that one. North Carolina 10, Virginia nothing. This now for your local ACC stations. Seen exclusively on Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Gary Sparber with Jack Corrigan at Keenan Stadium. It's 10 nothing North Carolina, but Virginia has to feel a bit better about things after stopping North Carolina on downs and now taking over at its own 17-yard line. Still better than 10 minutes to go in the first period. And on Derwin first down, the fullback, Derwin Griggs, gets about two yards. They have not been able on first down to run with their tailback, so they are trying to back off the linebackers a little bit as you watch Wyke and Rudolph step into the hole by running the fullback out of the option action or throwing on first down. They tried the fullback and got a couple. Duke is not going to go down easily. Tracy Smith has scored. Blue Devils within a touchdown. Here, Mikowski to throw. And through the hands of Kevin Morgan, who slipped down. And that kind of afternoon for Virginia, they've been very close on several occasions to making completions. White takes his drop. Now, Morgan is coming out of the backfield to the left of Mitch White. You can see he has problems with his footing. Had Morgan kept his feet, he catches the ball and certainly gets the first down. Instead, it's third and long yardage again for the Cavaliers. Third down and seven. That's Daryl Hammond at the bottom of your screen, split wide, and Antonio Goss right up there with him. Mikowski in trouble, and Carlton Bailey has his second sack of the afternoon. What a game he has had so far. North Carolina as we've got a flag on the play upfield. North Carolina came with a lot of people. Dan Vuletic, the free safety, was blitzing. And basically what they did is they created a mismatch on the line of scrimmage. There were more people to block than Virginia had blockers, and Mikowski eventually went down in the arms of Carlton Bailey. And if Bailey didn't get him, Ron Burton was going to. The flag is... Oh, a face mask. I was going to say it was in the secondary. It's a five-yard penalty, so as it turns out... Makes it a third and about two. Yeah. Unless it's an automatic first down. Grasping the face mask on the blue, five-yard penalty. Still third down. Because it's, only, yes, it was, because it's only a five-yard penalty. It's not the automatic first down here. And now North Carolina wants timeout because Dick Crum and Denny Marson, they want an explanation. Denny Marson, of course, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina. They wanted a, an explanation of what was taking place. Virginia will have an important third down and two when we come back. The Tar Heels lead by 10. A rainy day in Chapel Hill and a big play upcoming for the Virginia Cavaliers. Third down and two. It's a 
big play even more to the point, Gary, that Virginia has had trouble running the ball. You'd normally think third and two that you're going to put it on the ground, but Virginia has not been able to get much yardage on the ground, and perhaps they feel they're going to have to throw to get the first down here. Hey, they got to worry about literally putting it on the ground. That's happened on a few third down plays today for each team. Don McCaskey doesn't give it to Griggs. McCaskey still has it. This is Morgan and Walter Bailey with a big tackle. I don't believe they got the first down. Bailey is one guy who has been exonerated from whatever problems the defense has had for Carolina. McCaskey running the option. He's going to keep it himself. And then as he turns up, he sees traffic, gets it off to Kevin Morgan. And Kevin Morgan's got to realize, particularly in sloppy conditions, he can't go out there and give the double fake. He tried to dip inside and go back outside on Walter Bailey. He should have just gone. Did not get it, I don't think. Nope, inches. Walter Bailey is the leading tackler on this North Carolina team. He has just had a great year coming off knee surgery. They just The coaches are just so happy with what he has done for them this season. There he is. Four, one, two, it's a great lesson there for the youngsters who want to run with the football. Sometimes a little too much dancing can cost you. That time, Morgan with the extra fake ends up being inches shy of the first down and Virginia has to punt instead of keeping the drive alive. Also a good textbook tackle by Bailey. Without question. Not only a good tackle, but he also shed a block before making the tackle. Eric Lewis is awaiting the punt of Joel Dempsey. There's Lewis. Back at about his 33. 9.44 to go, first half. Dempsey waiting for the snap. Didn't hit it real good. However, North Carolina will let it bounce. Really had no choice, and it falls dead just at about the spot Lewis was waiting for it at the 33, a 40-yard kick. Going back to that third down play, Gary, that Walter Bailey comes up big for North Carolina. That's what they did not do last week against Clemson. When we talked with the North Carolina coaches yesterday at practice and earlier in the week, they all said that they felt they'd come in with a pretty good defensive game plan against Clemson. They knew they were going to be a good offensive team. They had people there who didn't make the play. Walter Bailey, on that occasion today, does make the play. We had two new secondary starters as a result for North Carolina today. Mark May has a first to ten at his own 33. This is Brad Locke. And Locke, with a clean uniform on his first carry, gets a big game. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line of Virginia. The free safety, Mike Metton, knocked Brad Lopp out of bounds. 24 yards. Well, you start getting Derek Fenner conscious, and who could blame you with the first half the Carolina tailback has had? You don't expect a Carolina fullback to get the quick pitch to the outside. Brad Lopp, with some good vision, pushed it to the sidelines and got upfield for a 24-yard pickup before Petten bumped him out of bounds. First and 10 for the uh, Tar Heels at the 44 of Virginia. Fenner, Eric Clay, the safety cut through and made the tackle very little, if any, gain, maybe a yard. Tackle by Eric Clay. Last week, Eric Clay turned in a fine ball game for Virginia. They took Clay, the free safety, the sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia, and brought him up close to the line of scrimmage and challenged NC State to try and run wide, and they were not able to do so, particularly with Eric Kramer banged up. Second down and nine for the Tar Heels. Brad Lopp. Not a whole lot of room there for him. It'll be about a third down and seven. Phil Thomas, the last man to get up off the bottom of the pile, making the stop for Virginia. The difference in the ball game this afternoon, besides the turnovers, has been that North Carolina has not been in this situation too often. Third and long yardage. That's why they're leading it 10 to nothing and have the ball at the Virginia 40 yard line. On a third down and six. Mark May. No flags. Virginia was jumping around on defense. May now flushed out of there. May gets a block, and then Eric Clay brings him down. About a yard shy of the first down, a flag is down. They're going to say the block on Sean Scott by John Keller, the tight end, was an illegal one. And Virginia, I'm sure, will take the penalty. They're calling it a clip. 
They're going to take the penalty because they want to set up third and long rather than fourth and about two. Yeah, I would think you'd be right. you got to take the penalty here because Carolina would go for it, I would think, fourth and two at around the 35. It was one of those blindside blocks by tight end John Keller. He was very upset. He felt he had made a clean block. Generally, the official makes that call on the basis of where the blocker's head is. If it's to the backfield side of the defender, it's usually considered a good block. If the head is upfield, it's generally called a flip. I don't know if we can see it on a replay after Bob Carpenter makes the call. Clipping on the blue team, still third down. Now watch number 10, John Keller, coming out of the right side of your screen. Watch where his head is. See, it's on the upfield side. If he would have been able to get his head across the body of Sean Scott, it would have been a legal block. Instead, it's called clipping. Excellent analysis on your part. It was very close, though. Third down and about 16. Spinner has a long way to run. He'll come up about five yards shy of it. Petting the free safety stops him after a 13-yard gain. Bill Thomas also helping out in the tackle. Derek Finner gets a lot of it back, but not enough. So a very costly penalty for North Carolina forces the first punt of the afternoon, if I'm right, for the Tar Heels. I believe you are right. Kenny Miller will put it away from his 46. Tar Heels have been dominating the game, but Virginia's just one big play from being right back in it. This one is going to work out to be one, a touchback. Looked like that would work out just perfectly for Kenny Miller, but it took the bounce into the end zone, so it's 40 yards, but the net gain is very little. You just made a very good point, Gary. For Virginia, it has been a frustrating first half, and we still have almost all of the second half of the second period yet to play. But they're, they're still in this ball game because it's only 10 to nothing. Carolina has only been able to convert twice. Boston College rolling in the Northeast. First and 10, Virginia. mccaskey has gone all the way at quarterback. That was not John Ford's fault. That simply was beyond his reach. Derek Donald covering on the play for North Carolina. Chris Warren in the ball game now at tailback. They ran Warren underneath Ford as they tried to flood the right side of the Virginia defense. Mikowski just overshot his target. So it will be second down and 10 from the 20. Ironically, you said Virginia just one big play from getting back into the ball game. They put their big play guy, Chris Warren, into the lineup and tailback. Mikowski has missed on his last four attempts. Second and 10. He will try again. In trouble. And down he goes. And can it be Carlton Bailey again? He also fumbled the football. He was lucky to fall on it again as Carlton Bailey comes up with another sack. Watch as Bailey makes the hit here on Mikowski. Don has the ball down around his belt. See, he's got the ball down low. He loses the football. And fortunately, Bailey, for Mikowski anyway, kicked the ball back into Mikowski's arms. But a big loss of 16 yards, third and a mile. Third down and 25 to be exact for the Cavaliers. Mikowski just got rid of it and gave it to Derwin Greggs, and Greggs is cannon fodder for the Tar Heel defense. And Mitch guess who White. was leading the charge along with Mitch White? It was Carlton Bailey, and now we got a little brouhaha going. The officials and coaches come out to quickly quell anything, as is the case with most football brouhaha's. Not a lot happens. Boy, Carlton Bailey has just been juiced up today. His third sack. They tell us he's their quickest defensive lineman, and he has really shown it today. But those are his first three sacks of the season. Ron Burton's been a big sack man. He's got eight. Tough punting position here for Dempsey, and Eric Lewis standing in Virginia territory waiting to receive it. 6.22 to go, first half, 10 nothing North Carolina. Not a good punt. Fumbled around, and a good move by Norris Davis to fall on it. Oh, we got more action going on. Eric Lewis and Victor Bullock were confused, and now we have a fight on the field. Well, Eric Lewis is going at it with one Virginia player. This is unfortunate, particularly since we got an awful lot of football yet to be played. 
We are only in the second period, and coaches are in there trying to pull apart the players. As George Welsh looks on. And there's not much, he's talking about a helpless feeling for the two head coaches. Neither one of them can get out there, obviously. Trauma on crutches and Welsh in the wheelchair. And cooler heads hopefully about to prevail. Well, you know, in the case of North Carolina here this afternoon, Gary, this is their final home game of the season. They took an awful lot of heat this week after the bad ball game last Saturday against Clemson. And as Coach Crum told us in the pregame and talking to some of the players, you tend to, to close ranks and rally around each other when you're getting heat from the outside. So I would imagine their emotional uh, thermometer is up just a little bit higher here this afternoon. And they want to win big here this afternoon and win next week to try and take some of the bite out of this season. Well, Jeff Garnica, the Tar Heel Center, I caught uh, him commenting on a local TV station yesterday. In fact, our affiliate, WRAL, he was saying that, hey, as we look at the call here. Dead ball, personal foul, blue. Dead ball, personal foul, white. Disqualified, disqualified. Well, we'll have to find out who the two players are that are disqualified. I was about to say that Garnica had said that the Tar Heels were simply embarrassed last week, and they felt they had something to prove to the fans, to the coaches, just to everybody. And as you say, there are an awful lot of emotions involved here. Eric Lewis is the young man disqualified for North Carolina. He was the guy involved in one of the fights in the area where the flag was thrown. I don't know who he was fighting with. I've just, been, Virginia. I've just been told Jack Eric Clay is the man who has been eliminated for Virginia, and that is a safety who has played well for them. And that is a tough loss for Virginia. So is Eric Lewis, but Eric Clay has been one of the stronger defenders for this Virginia team, certainly in the secondary. And Eric Lewis, they lose their punt returner, a kickoff returner, and a wide receiver. But obviously the officials have to take control. As you mentioned, we're only in the second quarter. They've got to get this thing settled down in a hurry. Well, there was a little bit of pushing and shoving that went on after the third down play, and it carried over into the punt. And now, hopefully, with the disqualifications, the officials and the coaches try and bring a semblance of order back to the ball game. There's Eric Clay talking to George Welsh, and I'm sure George is telling him, hey, emotion and enthusiasm is great, but you don't do me any good standing next to me the rest of this football game. Eric trying to explain to Coach Welsh what happened, but hey, if he just walks away, I don't think Coach Welsh will follow him, do you? First and ten coming up for North Carolina from the 38 of Virginia, 6.13 to go. First half. Let's see if we can come up with some of the things that took place during the punt. Carolina had a return on while they're coming to the line of scrimmage here on this play, so maybe we can pick it up later. Maybe it's even better just to get it out of the way. First down and 10. Carolina leads 10 nothing. Mark May still your quarterback. Thompson and Fenner behind. This is Fenner. And Sean Scott brought him down after a gain of two at the 35 yard line. Virginia with a little bit different defensive look that time. Billy Keyes was also there to help out for the Virginia Cavaliers. They slipped one of the tackles inside closer to their nose man to try and force Carolina away from that side. Boy, what a first half for Derek Fenner. 147 yards already and a touchdown for Fenner. May completes it to Randy Marriott at the 29-yard line of Virginia. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Randy Marriott, who will be in the ball game now with the ejection of Eric Lewis. Quick rollout pattern. Lewis does the turn in right in front of Don Bryant, who was playing as an outside linebacker on the play for Virginia. Marriott was at one time a North Carolina Shrine Bowl MVP, and they'll name this year's Shrine Bowl player the North Carolina-South Carolina All-Star game on Monday. Third down and two, and Mark May does a good job as a flag goes down to get the first down and get down to the 14. Now we'll have to see what the flag is all about. Kevin Cook made the tackle downfield, but we'll see if there was an illegal block or a hold or a clip or something that would bring the play back. 
Well, judging by the way Jeff Garnica reacted to the conversation, it's not good news for the Carolina fans. That's simply illegal procedure, but that's good enough to eliminate the first down and bring the ball back. Excellent job by Mark May to first step up in the pocket, then secondly avoid the tackle attempt of Roy Brown and picking up what would have been a first down had it not been for the procedure penalty. Here's the call. Five-yard loss for the Tar Heels. Illegal motion on the blue. Still third down. Well, we went from illegal procedure to illegal motion, but five yards either way. It'll be third down and six. Last two possessions for North Carolina. They have lost the first down because of a penalty. Let's see if it happens again. Still Thompson and Fetter behind May. That Streeter at the top of your screen. Quint Smith was at the bottom. May is looking at Quint Smith. May throws further downfield to Randy Marriott. What are they going to rule? No, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. This will draw the ire of the North Carolina fans. From the end of the play here, Mark May, ball falling rapidly. Marriott tried to make the diving catch. Can't we, tell from that angle. And we had the same angle as the official on that side, and he deferred to the other side, and the side judge on the far side said definitely no catch. He didn't hesitate at all making the call. Kenny Miller will kick it away. Kevin Gould is back deep to receive. He is their sure-handed punt returner. Not going to get them a lot of yards. In fact, I believe he's fair caught every one he's had this year. Taking a long time to snap the footballs. They were trying to hope that Virginia perhaps would jump offside. Or perhaps just to give the kicker five more yards because they would not have gotten the first down even if they had gotten the jump offside. No, that's right. I mean, they don't mind taking a five-yard penalty. And had Virginia been a little too exuberant, they might have had a fourth and one situation and perhaps go for it then. Delay on the blue team. I mean, you're right. It gives Kenny Miller more room to perhaps pin the ball inside the 10. But that's, that's a... A real safe game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He does hang it up there near the sideline. Let's see how this one bounces. Boy, oh. Miller can't get a break. That's the second one he's had that almost went out around the goal line. But, again, just a touchback. Sometimes the guys trying to down the ball bang into each other. They had room to make the play here. But unfortunately for North Carolina, Sterling Hayden couldn't quite control the football in time, and it goes into the end zone. Now, well, North Carolina's been doing a lot of moving of the football, but on the scoreboard, it's still 10 nothing. North Carolina still leading 10 nothing. We have four minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Now, another game being played in this area of great importance to the ACC race, North Carolina State leading Duke. 14-7, that game now at halftime, and Eric Kramer has gone over the 4,000-yard mark in his state career, and we're talking last year and this year. Kramer was a junior college transfer from Canoga Park, California. First and 10, Virginia, trying to get on the board before halftime, and Chris Warren gets rude treatment at the line of scrimmage. A combination of the linebackers, Brett Rudolph and Mitch White. It'll be second and 10. Virginia has just not been able at all to run their tail back on first down. So what has happened, they keep getting second and 10, second and 11, second and 9, second and 8. You can be the greatest offensive coordinator in the world. That's a tough play call. It's second and 9 here. Chris Warren and Derwin Briggs are the backs. Mikowski's still the quarterback. And Mikowski in trouble gets it off to Griggs. But Griggs is a load to bring down. First down, Virginia, and Jim York just simply could not bring down the very big load of Derwin Griggs. Good play call by Virginia here. They've been getting an awful lot of heat from Mikowski. He, he gets a lot of heat here. Jim goes right in his face. So you call the screen pass. Actually, Griggs never got to the screen blockers, but he just kept banging off bodies and banging off bodies, and finally Howard Fagans brought him down. First down at the 33. And there's nothing there for Derwin Griggs. Well, they go back to the fullback on the first down carry. But Ron Burton was right there to stop. I really think, Gary, and I don't like to get into second-guessing situations. What? Well, not too often, anyway. But I think Virginia just has to throw the ball more on first down. They, they're just not doing it on the ground on first down. 
second down and nine. Virginia on its 34. Mikowski turns it up on the option. Got by Derek Donald, and Howard Fagan drives him down at the 49-yard line, and he ran the option pretty nicely that time. Ben Mikowski, yeah, he gives you that kind of riverboat gambler style, you know. He Watch the block here by Joel Dempsey on Ron Burton. Burton that time decides to shuffle wide and try and force the quarterback to run the football. That's what Mikowski did, but Burton just didn't have inside support. Virginia did a good job of cutting off the inside linebackers. We're down to 2.35 to go in the first half. Virginia down 10-0 on first and 10 here. For John Ford was wide open, and Ford has it go off his fingertips. It would have been an excellent athletic catch, but it was off his fingertips. He was running alone. Virginia with twin receivers to Mikowski's left. North Carolina in a two-deep zone, and you've got a space in the middle of the field, and Ford finds that space. Mikowski again throws the ball more on a line. If he would have given Ford a little room to run under it, it would have been an easier catch, and John might have been in the end zone. Saw John Ford wearing those gloves. It's chilly today. Don't know whether that has any effect on him. Second down and 10. A little bit of counter move to Derwin Briggs, and Carlton Bailey made the first hit, the gate of four on the play. It will be second down and six. You know, we talked earlier in the season about Mark May making the adjustment, and now we've got a timeout on the field as we've got an injured Carolina player. You see the Mississippi-Tennessee game in the second period, 7-6. to six. Jimmy Rayburn, our associate producer, is not happy with that score. Brett Rudolph is the man down. I said second down. It would be third down. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Poland most valuable player from each team in addition to recognizing our two MVPs, are you listening, Carlton Bailey? Poland will donate a $500 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Virginia and North Carolina as part of the Poland Most Valuable Player Award Scholarship Program. And the Tar Heels have to be very concerned with Brett Rudolph down. To finish my point that I started to allude to, a couple of weeks ago we talked about Mark May. And, you know, coming back off the shoulder operation and the shoulder injuries and all that was not going to be 100% with that shoulder. We have, we have to say here that Don Mikowski certainly is not playing at 100% after having the shoulder problem early in the season. Good to see Brett Rudolph walking off under his own power. So Mikowski doesn't have the touch that he might have had at the start of the season when he was completely healthy. Sometimes he doesn't put enough on the ball. Sometimes he puts too much on the ball. You're away from the action psychologically the shoulder doesn't feel 100 percent mentally you don't feel 100 percent confident in how you're throwing the football those are the things that have affected Mikowski last week and this week here's what we have coming up at halftime another ACC champions feature a look at the scores and deltas one for the books third down and six Mikowski has time and an excellent catch was made by Mattioli Jim Yock covering on the play, but Mattioli really made a nice play. First down. Mikowski straight back in the pocket. Good pocket protection that time by the Virginia offensive line, and Mattioli totally stretched out for a fine catch. 15 yards on the play, first and 10, 152 to go. First half, 10 nothing North Carolina. Mikowski completes his pass to Chris Warren at the 27-yard line, a gain of five. Chris It'll be Warren. second and five. Howard Fagans on the tackle. Warren was trying to get out of bounds, but Fagans with the sure tackle keeps the clock running down to 135. Virginia still has all three of its timeouts left. They need to put some points on the board here. They do not want to be shut out going into the locker room. Second down and four for them. A give to Derwin Griggs, and Griggs got about two or three yards. He'll be shy of a first down. And Virginia timeout. uses their first timeout. They were hoping to get the first down on the running play and stop the clock that way. But now they're faced with another tough third down call. Third down and short. They're within Jeff Gaffney's range, but keep in mind you've got a chopped up field and a very soggy field. So every time you kick a field goal here this afternoon, it's going to be a little bit adventurous. There have been a couple of times during the game, I don't know about you, but I felt like Virginia was very close to letting the whole thing kind of crumble apart. Any kind of score they get here, and they're one score away from the ball game in the second half. It's much like we had last week, in which NC State was totally out of it in the first half, and Virginia was leading 7 to nothing, going to make it 14 nothing, And then Derek Taylor goes 88 yards with the interception for a touchdown, and then the onside kick in which they recover and kick the field goal and actually have the lead at halftime. 
And Virginia's in a situation that the Wolfpack was a week ago. They put seven points on the board here and get the second half kickoff. They're, they're in good shape. A year ago, it was a battle between John Hall and Scott Seacules. Hall is on the bench for North Carolina, the second-string quarterback now. And Seacules, the same for Virginia, although we may well see him before the day is out. We could see Hall. Third down and two. See if they go with the option to the left of Mikowski, the wide side. Instead, McCaskey goes to the right and turns it upfield and gets the first down. Derek Donald couldn't quite get McCaskey. That's what you get for listening to that, that guy talking into your ear there on the right. But what he did, uh, they were going to run the option, but he audibleized and went to the short side instead of the wide side. Got the first down, though. First down and 10 at the 20. McCaskey now to throw. And he completes his pass to Warren, but no, Warren is both feet out of bounds, and Warren, you could see, was concentrating on the football, but was not giving any attention to where his feet were. Well, that was a pass where you're hoping to get a little yardage, but you're really just trying to stop the clock. Warren quickly comes out of the backfield. He's open. McCaskey delivers it. Chris makes the catch, and the foot is barely out of bounds, but out of bounds definitely because there was an official right on the spot. 103 to go first half, second half, and 10 for the Cavaliers. McCaskey may run. Nope. Well, he runs out of bounds at 22. That was just great work by Derek Donald and Jim Yock, who had the intended receiver. Kevin Ferguson all covered up in the end zone, and McCaskey just took it out of bounds, and it'll be third and 12. And a limping Brett Rudolph, who forced McCaskey, who looked like he was going to run the ball, to pull back and attempt to throw it, and then eventually he had to run out of bounds anyway. Brett uh, Rudolph, good to see him back in. Third and 12. 57 seconds left, as you see. Blitz picked up. And the pass is thrown behind Keith Mattioli. McCaskey may have worried more about that blitz than he had to. As you said, it had been picked up. Now we're Vegans on the coverage. Danny Vulicic was blitzing to the right of McCaskey. He's picked up. And Mattioli is open. But here's the shoulder problems we talked about a few moments ago. And uh, somebody got a piece of the ball as well on the line of scrimmage. It just doesn't get there. And so now they're forced to try the long field goal. Jeff Gaffney with Scott Seacules to hold a 39-yard attempt from the right hash mark to get Virginia on the board and within a touchdown. Nice pass. Good job by Seacules. A fake, and Seacules is totally wrapped up. Well, I don't know what they intended. But it was a high snap. Seacules apparently didn't think he would have time to get the ball away, and Derek Donald covered him up. Yes, it was not a fake. It was just what you call a fire call by the holder. He makes the determination of the snap. Oh, that oh, there right bubbled. there. Yeah. He never got it down. And then it's scramble time, and Donald and Fagans, who were the blockers, come in and make the hit on Seacules. It's a high snap to begin with, and trying to pull it down. Scott could not get the ball set up for Gaffney. He had no chance to do anything at all. But Gaffney didn't get a lot of help that time. His snapper snapped it high and his holder fumbled the football after a good job to get the snap. At any rate, first and ten, Mark May throws it to Fenner out of bounds and it'll be second and ten with 40 seconds left in the first half. Fenner just couldn't keep his feet as he was trying to catch the ball. His feet slipped out from underneath him and slid out of bounds. So the Tar Heels now with a chance to put some more points on the board. It's really tough for Virginia. They would have loved, dearly loved, to get something on that scoreboard before halftime. Second and ten. As you look at Mark May, he's had some excellent performances since coming back from major shoulder surgery. And Derek Fetter gets up to the 40-42 yard line, and I'll be real honest with you, I was looking at Mark May, who is calling a timeout right now. Bill Thomas on the tackle. May fool me that time on the give. Well, they were hoping they would have fooled Virginia a little <laughs> more right. and got better yardage for Derek Fenner. Sets up a third down and short situation, but the big thing here is to try and pick up about 30 or 35 more yards in these final 32 seconds to give Kenny Miller or Legally Armas a chance to kick a field goal or maybe get lucky and put seven on the board. How many games have you seen, though, where one team is dominated but just hangs around on that scoreboard? It can be dangerous later on. 
This first half for George Welsh has been something he has seen all too often this year. With a couple of exceptions, Virginia has been a team that has looked good statistically, but has not been able to score. They have been frustrated, particularly in the first half, in terms of coming away with points to finish off drives. As you see South Carolina jumping out early against Wake Forest, 14 to nothing. That should be a high-scoring ball game if uh, past records are any indication with those two teams. Todd Ellis in that game has tied a freshman record at South Carolina with 18 touchdown passes as a freshman. Third down and two here. Mark May has a wide open receiver, but it's knocked away by Ray Sanders, the linebacker. Ball might have been thrown a bit low. Now Mark tried to be too careful with that ball. He wanted to just drop it over the top of Ray Savage to John Keller, who was open. And boy, you got to give good Savage effort, yeah. credit. He he climbed the ladder to make up, to break up the play and make a good effort for Virginia. And Mike Patton almost was there to make a diving interception. So Kenny Miller will boot it away with 25 seconds to go in the first half. They're coming after this punt. They do not get it. They also don't get Kenny Miller. Chris Warren watches it bounce at the 25, and that's where North Carolina downs it with only 15 seconds left in the first half. A 33-yard punt by Kenny Miller. Well, if I've got John Ford on my team and 15 seconds to go here in the half, I line him out there wide and let it rip. All right, we'll see if that's what George Welsh has decided to do. Virginia certainly with a, not a whole lot to lose. They are 3-6 and six coming in. North Carolina here, then they've got... Maryland yet to come. That's in about two weeks on a Friday, day after Thanksgiving. North Carolina next week has the traditional season ender with Duke. Tar Heels are hoping for help from Maryland later this afternoon, hoping they can win here. Maryland might beat Clemson, and the Tar Heels would then beat Duke. They gain a tie for the ACC title. And State's still in that picture as well. McCaskey will just sit down with it, and that's your first half. Well, that will be your first half anyway. And five more seconds tick off the clock. Not the offensive wizardry that we've seen for much of this ACC season, but nonetheless, North Carolina on top by the score of 10-0. We're at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. The rain has let up a bit, and we'll be back with halftime activities with the Tar Heels up by 10. Production's exclusive live coverage of this second half of Atlantic Coast Conference football is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Companies, helping to put a brighter face on the future. Delta, the airline of ACC country. Delta gets you there with care. Poland, America's chainsaw. First Wachovia, serving the financial needs of individuals and businesses in the Southeast and the nation. And by Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new Go Anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your Nissan dealer now. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Poland most valuable player from each team. In addition to recognizing our two MVPs, Poland will donate a $500 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Virginia and North Carolina as part of the Poland Most Valuable Player Award Scholarship Program. Gary Sparber with Jack Corrigan. We're in Chapel Hill where North Carolina leads Virginia 10-0 as you look at North Carolina quarterback Mark May. And we have two less players right now than we had when we started the ball game. That's right. Eric Lewis and Eric Clay were both ejected after there was a mild spat, shall we say, after a Virginia punt, and both those men were ejected. It was a good first half for Derek Fenner, who had 154 yards on the ground for North Carolina. 68 of them came on this play. Great lead block from James Thompson put Fenner into the secondary. And when you put this runaway freight train in the open field, look out. Fenner outrunning the Virginia defenders. Excellent effort by Sean Scott to try and track him down, but Fenner with the balance was able to get it into the end zone. Well, one statistic will tell you the whole story of this ball game so far, and that is yards rushing. As we show you the stats, look at that. North Carolina, 213 yards. Virginia 14, and by contrast, last week, Virginia ran up 324 yards on the ground against North Carolina State. Virginia comes into the ball game averaging 175 yards a game on the ground, so you can see how much they have been shut down by the Carolina defense. But keep in mind, they are still down just 10 to nothing and have had some success moving the football. Several Carolina turnovers have enabled Virginia to stay in the ball game. Turnovers, as we felt, 
were going to be a factor in this game. They prevented Virginia from its best scoring opportunity when they fumbled on the Carolina five-yard line late in the first quarter. We want to offer some congratulations to a couple of members of our Jefferson Pilot Teleproduction staff, camera operator and uh, tape operator, actually, Joel Eric McKee. And Kathy Cook, now Kathy Cook McKee, a very attractive couple who joined forces last week. Virginia takes the opening kickoff. Tim Finkelston coming across the 25 and up to the 29 yard line. In fact, struggled his way across the 30, where it will be first down and 10 for Virginia, trailing 10 0 to the Tar Heels here in Keenan Stadium. That is Kenny Miller who kicked it off for North Carolina. And there's Tim Finkelston, the return man. They put the ball down at the 33, first and 10, Virginia. Always love watching the first couple of series of the second half to see what kind of adjustments the coaching staffs made during their halftime talks. First and 10. Still Don Mikowski at quarterback. John Ford in motion, you see. This is Kevin Morgan. And Morgan hurdles for a gain of about two yards. It'll be second and eight. Morgan had the first 100-yard game of his career last week. Carlton Bailey tripped him up. In the first half, Virginia had an awful lot of trouble trying to run their tailback on first end. This time they put Ford in motion to give them even one more player to that side for blocking purposes, but Bailey upset the apple cart of Kevin Morgan after just a couple of yards. Second down, eight from the Virginia 35. Mikowski to Morgan, and Morgan slips down, and he'll be about four or five yards shy of a first down. The field's not in terrible shape, but there are some divots out there and some soft spots to be dealt with. As you look at South Carolina rolling over Wake Forest in the second period. 19th touchdown pass of the season for Todd Ellis. That is a new NCAA freshman record for a quarterback. Mark Herman, formerly of Purdue, is the guy who held it previously, now with the San Diego Chargers. Third down and four. And McCaskey, who was under tremendous pressure from Ron Burton, couldn't get the ball to Derwin Briggs coming out of the backfield. He was waiting and waiting and waiting for Briggs to break free, but freshman linebacker Steve Lowe had good coverage on Derwin Griggs, and Mikowski couldn't get enough on the ball when Ron Burton wrapped into him. Fourth down and four, so Virginia will kick it away. Now remember, Eric Lewis is out of the ball game because he was thrown out during uh, an altercation earlier, so Victor Bullock is back deep to receive the kick of Joel Dempsey. Bullock will take it at his 26. He got about 11 yards out of it. Not a bad effort for Victor Bullock after a 35-yard punt. North Carolina will have it first and 10 at its own 37-yard line. Just underway, second half. North Carolina 10, Virginia nothing, and the Tar Heels will have their first second-half possession when we come back. Here's great news for truck buyers. Nissan announces the all-new 1987 hard-body truck that still sells for only $65.99. Here's even greater news. Nissan is adding a special option package to e-models. Sporty graphics, sleek outside mirror, fender flares, bright wheel trim rings, sliding rear window, and a rugged bumper. A $630 value at no additional cost. America's best truck value just got better. They're available now at your nearby Nissan dealer. North Carolina State is doing its part to try to share the ACC title. They need a Maryland victory over Clemson later today to do it. 10-0 North Carolina, early third period. Mark May has the Tar Heels with a first and 10 at their 37. Derek Fenner is hit behind the line of scrimmage, and down he goes. The hit was made by Don Bryant. He's played defensive back, played defensive end. A number of the Virginia players have had to jump around defensively because of injuries this year. First offensive series for Virginia. They do nothing. They kick away and give Carolina pretty good field position. Now it's the Tar Heels' turn to see what they can do here against the defensive adjustments that Virginia has made since halftime. Michigan got a field goal, but still trailing Minnesota. 7-3, to three, the battle for the little brown jug, they call it in the Midwest. Second and ten. Mark May. Eric Streeter said, let me turn around and see where I can run with this thing. Wait a minute, I forgot the football. Rain is no longer a problem here. It has stopped raining, but it is one of those chilly, biting kind of days temperature-wise, and Eric Streeter just flat out dropped the football. Yeah, I was wrong about that. He wasn't turning around. He just dropped it. 
third down and ten for the Tar Heels. Well, as a receiver who dropped a few in his career, I can sympathize with Eric. Well, I figured you were up here for some reason. <laughs> May will throw, I would think, on third and ten. <laughs> After play action. Derek Fenner has a ways to run. Gets a good block, and Fenner got the first down. Who got the block? James Thompson. Whoa, what a crunching block in a great situation for North Carolina. And that's just hustle, too, because Thompson was offering pass protection for Mark May, and as soon as he released the ball, Thompson took off upfield and really popped David Griggs. An 11-yard gain as a result. They never would have gotten anywhere close to that without the crunching block of Thompson. It enabled Fenner to turn the corner. First and 10, North Carolina on its 48, leading 10-0. Derek Fenner weaving his way to the 45 and down to the 43-yard line before David Griggs combines with Bill Thomas to bring him down. Slice a late on Derek Fenner, who is on his way to a 200-yard afternoon, shedding tacklers and always with that forward lean looking for a little extra yardage. Well, Carolina fans got to be pleased with the knowledge that there are two more years at number 12 in the Carolina backfield. And they got a freshman, Torin Dorn, right behind him, who is just as tough. Second down and two, James Thompson has open field running, and if Thompson could have kept his balance just a bit more, he might have scored. As it is, he got to the 24 before Mike Fenton brought him down, a 19-yard game. Again, when you have Fenner running well, you can then go to the fullback on the quick hitter. What a block by Jeff Garnica, and it was only Mike Petton who knocked the balance off of James Thompson to prevent the Carolina touchdown. Tar Heels on the move at the 24-yard line of Virginia. They already lead 10-0, 11.44 to go in the third period. Derek Fetter to the 15, to the 7-yard line. Great blocking by that front line before Sean Scott brought down Derek Fenner, a 17-yard game. Derek Fenner one more time out of the eye formation behind the block of Thompson and right guard Pat Crowley. And Petten and Sean Scott prevent the touchdown, but Carolina doing what they wanted to do on their first possession, put it in the end zone. First down and goal, 180 yards now for Derek Fenner. May lost the football, I think he got it back himself. It'll be second down. See if it was right off the snap for Mark May. Yep. Just never got a handle on the exchange with Jeff Garnica, and fortunately for Carolina and their fans. Mark May was able to come up with a fumble. Pretty quick reaction by May on that play. It'll be second down. Virginia lost a football inside the North Carolina 10 in the first half where this might be uh, somewhat of a different ball game. As it is, North Carolina looking to blow it open if they can get in the end zone here. Second down now from the eight. Wide open Marriott, but the ball was knocked away by Kevin Gould in the secondary. Marriott had Gould beat if May could have looped the ball a bit higher. They go with twin receivers to the left of Mark May and watch Gould react to this football. Nice job by Kevin Gould. He was actually more concerned about Marriott who did the out pattern at the goal line and Streeter goes to the back end and unfortunately for Carolina, Mark May could get it up there. Unfortunately for Virginia, Gould makes a good play. Third down and goal from the eight. Very big play now. After play action, John Keller did not get a foot down. John Keller says touchdown. The official says, no, you didn't get your foot down. Kevin Cook on the cover. John Keller, the former quarterback, so he has felt both sides of those kind of tough calls. May with good protection. The tight end running a corner route. Keller with a nice catch and good call by the official. That left foot hit right on the line as he was coming down. What a big play because even if Legally Armors converts this field goal, it will still be within two touchdowns for Virginia. So they've still got a shot. 
This will be a 24-yard attempt from the right hash mark, the part of the field we were told that is kind of sloppy. Made a hole. No problem. The kick is good. So legally, Armis converts. And with 10-13 to go in the third period, you look at this score, and we break for this from your local ACC station. 15-0, North Carolina, still early in the third period. That fumble on first down, first and goal for North Carolina, really prevented them from having the, the touchdown opportunity down there because they were forced to throw the ball on second down, and when that was broken up by Gould, they tried to have one, where they were forced to throw again on third down, and Virginia very happy to come away there with just the three points because, as you said, Gary, they're still within two touchdowns of the lead now. About all they've got to do now is you look at Chris Warren waiting for the kick of Kenny Miller is show that they can get that ball in the end zone. They haven't done it yet. Warren starts from the six. Accelerates at the 30. Boy, he put on a nice little burst of acceleration there but didn't quite have enough room to get through. A 24-yard kickoff return by Chris Warren, Brian Causey on the tackle. Chris Warren here is trying to let the blocking develop. Look for the hole, and once he sees the seam, accelerate right there. And he quite nearly popped it. First down, Virginia. They start at their 30. It's still Mikowski in there. He's got all the way at quarterback. Mikowski will keep it himself and get five yards on first down. Brett Rudolph, the linebacker, and Jim Yock. The cornerback who got his first start today combined on the tackle and a North Carolina player is down. Jim Gold has got an ankle problem. Virginia goes back to the option that's been their most successful running play when they have run the ball on first down. And, and that might be why Don Mikowski is still on the ball game instead of Scott Seacules who really doesn't run the option as well. See if we can see where Tim Goad goes down. He is right there in the middle of your screen and yep, he got rolled into as he was fending off the block of center Tim Morris to his right. It would have been left guard John Fetzko, I believe, of Virginia who inadvertently rolled into that leg. And For all the problems that North Carolina's had defensively, few put the blame much on the front four. Tim Goad and Reuben Davis, Ron Burton and Carlton Bailey. Most of the offensive coaches you talk to in the ACC point to that foursome as about as good a unit as there is in the league. As Goad begins to hobble off. They are already without Noel McCahern, who got hurt last week, yeah. broke his leg against Clemson. And now Goad, the way he is walking, is certainly not going to be in the action right away. I had speculated on Scott Seacules because they had planned to use both quarterbacks today as they had in the past few weeks. Seacules, a junior, will be back next year. Oklahoma has now taken the lead on Colorado. Cecil Gray, a freshman, now in a nose man, replacing Tim Goat. Second down five for the Cavaliers. Movement and the flag. Chris Manier, the right guard for Virginia. Designated by our spotter Tony Britt as the guilty party. We'll see if that's true. Dead ball foul, false start on the wide field. Five yard field. Well, so much for the good five yard gain on first down. Here comes Virginia again. A second and long call. North Carolina State adds three. And they're comfortably in front of Duke. Wake Forest on the board, but still three touchdowns down to South Carolina. Second down, 10 here for Virginia. Darrell Hammond in motion. Kevin Morgan. And a combination of Mitch White. I thought I saw Kubi Colombo in there. I'm not sure if that's not. It was not him. A new man in the ballgame, Donnie Wallace. Defensive guard out of Everett, North Carolina. 75 as opposed to Colombo, who would have been 95. Third down and seven for Virginia. 9.08 to go, third period. 13 nothing, North Carolina. Carolina has blitzed a number of times, but they're dropped off this down. McCaskey after a pump fake. Great defensive coverage, and Howard Fagan picks it off. They 
Megan's running literally across the 40, and Megan's down at the 43 yard line. First interception of the season for Howard Megan's, who played it as well as you possibly can. They slip Chris Warren out of the backfield, and Megan's the strong safety turns just at the right moment to come up with his football. They've got Warren in single coverage up the sidelines. Mikowski under throwing the ball and Fagans turns and adjusts to it very well. Makes the interception. Ran a great deal but didn't get much more but he did come up with the interception. So North Carolina will start from its 42 already leading 13-0 when we come back. Atlantic Coast Conference football coming your way Saturday, November 22nd. The Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech takes on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Next week, our finale of the ACC season, your Nissan Game of the Week, Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. Mark May for North Carolina gives the ball off to Derek Benner, and Benner gets about six or seven yards. We have 8.42 to go third period. It is 13-0 North Carolina over Virginia. Ray Savage made the stop. Scott Sequels has begun to warm up on the far sideline behind the Virginia bench, and it looks like uh, George Wells is going to go to the bullpen, bringing on Scott here on the next offensive series for Virginia. Mikowski is 10 of 21 for 101 yards. Mark May, 6 of 14 for 71 yards. He has a second and four here. Gives to James Thompson, who gets the first down. Boy, is he tough to bring down. All the way to the 30-yard line of Virginia. Finally, Kevin Cook brought him down with an 18-yard gain for James Thompson. Thompson is a load, and as I mentioned earlier, you start concentrating on Fenner, and they run the quick little trap inside of the fullback, and Thompson, shedding tacklers, pushes it all the way in to the Virginia 30-yard line. First and 10 from that point for North Carolina. As you look at James Thompson's numbers, Derek Fenner got nothing. Ray Savage, the linebacker, has had a bunch of tackles today. He had 16 tackles last week against North Carolina State. So Savage, perhaps uh, late in his freshman year, coming into his own. He's out of Newport News, Virginia. High school All-American at Warwick High School in Newport News. And he has certainly come on strong in the closing weeks of the season. He had 16 tackles last week. What a terrific effort. Second down, 10 from the 30. May with the pitch to Fenner, running behind Thompson. Fenner eludes one tackler and comes up about five yards shy of a first down. Roy Brown, the freshman out of Washington, D.C., who had been on offense much of the season, and they like the job he's done for them on defense, he made the stop. Boy, sometimes when you're a cornerback, you just have to take the punishment and live with it. Kevin Gould had to take on not only James Thompson, but also Ralph Pfeiffer, just to let somebody else make the tackle. Third down and five. May will run with the ball. Made a nice cut, but Delano Tyler crunched him about a yard or two shy of the first down. The fourth and one. Well, a field goal here puts it beyond the reach of two touchdowns, so I would think there'd be no decision to make. Mark May rolling to his right. Cuts inside of Sean Scott, who takes a pretty good lick. Steps around a couple of people before Tyler and Phil Thomas and company stop short of the first Boy. down, and Carolina's going to go for it. Ah, well, all right, but a 39-yard field goal gets you out of... Uh, Two touchdown range. All right, they go power on on fourth down and two. They give the ball to Fenner, and Fenner, I think, got the first down. It's very, very close. He slipped as he was coming out of his start, and he never really got the momentum he wanted to get. It'd be a very tough spot here. Boy, oh boy. Carolina got a pretty good surge off the ball. Donnie Bryant with the hit, and I don't think he made it looking at it. Granted, that angle is behind the 30-yard line. The fans are booing the spot. Well, I, I tell you what, I'd love to have those three points on the board if I'm North Carolina. Well, he got the first down, I think, yeah. Half a football.
But since you said earlier in the game that we don't do a lot of second guessing, I will simply say it's first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Although I think I second guess. First and 10 for North Carolina. May with the gift to Thompson. And Thompson, great by Rayotis Perkins. And we saw the strength of Perkins. Nobody's done that to Thompson all day. But Rayotis Perkins grabbed him and held him right in his track. Senior out of Richmond, Virginia, gain of three. Carolina, particularly when they have gotten down here inside the 20 yard line of Virginia, has put twin receivers to the wide side of the field, trying to stretch out the Virginia wide side defense a little bit. But they have been running the ball back to the short side of the field. Second down, six. Derek Penner didn't get a good grip on it at the start, and then manages to get the line of scrimmage on a yard or two beyond that before David Griggs made the stop with help from Billy Keyes. It'll be third down and five. Mark May looks over to the Carolina sidelines for the play. Derek Penner getting closer and closer to a 200-yard afternoon. He had about what, two yards shy, 25 carries, 198 yards for Derek Penner. But it's still just a 13 to nothing ball game. They need some points to put it out of reach on this drive. Third down and a long four. This is Penner. Doesn't look like he has any running room. A flag is down. He got the first down, but I think they'll bring this back. I don't believe this will stand. It was a good effort, though, by Fenner to get the first down yardage. We'll see what the officials decide. For the third time this afternoon, Carolina with a penalty on a third down call. Holding. This will make it a much longer field goal trial, though they'll have one more play prior to that. Get it back to about the 24. It certainly sets you up into a third down passing situation now. You're kind of tough to expect to pick up 15 yards on the ground at that point on the field. We'll get the call from Bob Carpenter. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty. Still third down. North Carolina has totally dominated the line of scrimmage. Look at that. They're over 300 yards on the ground. Virginia with just 24. And last week, 324 against North Carolina State for Virginia. But they're not surprised. They knew they were not going to run it that well. I'm sure they expected more than 24 yards, though. Third and 15. May has time. And it's picked off. To the 30. Boy, we joked about it yesterday. We said he had three last week. If he got three this week, he could take the ACC interception. Lee Boy's got two today in five in two weeks. Mark May telegraphed this pass all the way. He's looking all the way at Eric Streeter, and there you see Patton, like a center fielder, just stepped right up. All he has to do is the free safety is read the quarterback. Mark May on that play needed to look to his right, look off Streeter. He might have gotten Patton out of there and would have had Streeter open. But he looked at him all the way, and it cost Carolina. Five interceptions in two weeks for Mike Patton. Back after this for your local ACC stations. Atlantic Coast Conference Football. Seen exclusively on Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Gary Sparber with Jack Corrigan, 13-0 North Carolina, 3.45 to go in the third quarter. And Scott Seacules has made his first appearance of the game in relief of Don Mikowski at quarterback for Virginia. Seacules gives it to the fullback, and Max Holen got five yards to the 35. It is second down and five. Mitch White on the tackle. We thought with the conditions this afternoon we would have a number of turnovers. We have had three on each side today. That's pretty appropriate, Gary, because on the season, as you look at Seacules' numbers on the season, on the season both these teams are at dead even in the plus-minus category. Second down and five. Seacules' first pass is complete on a nice tack downfield. I think that's Mattioli, although as yes. dirty as that uniform is, it's kind of tough to tell. You know, you can tell he's wearing the dark gloves. That's how you oh, know right, it's you Seacules quickly back in the pocket. The little turn-in route, and Mattioli with a diving catch for the first down. 
still have three minutes to play here in the third quarter, and as we have said, Virginia's still within two touchdowns of taking the lead in this ball game. At the 48-yard line, their own 48, and Pat Tolan running hard gets about five more yards into North Carolina territory, and again, Mitch White brings him down. We go to the fullback. Watch what happens here on the option. Boom. But see that's what they have been able to do now on first down, the last two first down plays. Ezekiel took a heck of a pop from Burton, but he handed it to the fullback in that part of the option, and they've gotten five yards each time. Nice to have you in the game, Scott. Second and four. Chris Warren. Ron Burton dragged him down, maybe inches shy of the first down marker. It'll all depend upon the spot. But if you get the five and six yards on first down, you can then come back to the tailback on second down because the defense has to play you a little bit more honestly. And Warren is able to get it out close to the first down. And if you're an offensive coordinator, you don't mind making the third and one calls. We saw Seacules lead his team back earlier this season in Winston-Salem against Wake Forest. He also a year ago led Virginia to an upset of North Carolina. Yes, he did. Third down and one for Virginia. At the North Carolina 44, that's Daryl Hammond in motion. He will lead the play. And a great penetration by Tim Goad, and they don't get the first down. Don't get the first down. They lost you. They really did. Goad came across almost as if he knew the snap count. Tim Goad, number 76, just overwhelms left guard John Fetzko, and he is in the backfield, stopping Virginia's attempt at the first down. They ended up losing about a half a yard. Boy, that hurts. They've got to kick it away. At least I think they'll kick it away. They're set up to punt. Joel Dempsey is at his 42. There's nobody back deep for North Carolina. So the Tar Heels are not necessarily convinced. He better kick it now, though, and he does. A floater. It's going to take a very good Virginia bounce and hold up at the 8-yard line. So North Carolina will have it after the 36-yard punt by Joel Dempsey. Excellent punt. Just what he wanted to do. 52 seconds left, third period. North Carolina takes over. North Carolina needs to advance the football. Virginia trying to play the game of field position right now. Had a little bit of success there. Moved it down. Markers up for one first down. And now they've got the advantage in field position. But they've got to maintain it in order to allow their offense a chance to put some points on the board. Now, did he make the trip with you from Cleveland? No, no, no. no. Oh. First and ten from the nine. <laughs> Mark May's got all the way at quarterback, gives it to Brad Lopp, and Lopp would just as soon have not had it on this play. He got nothing. It'll be, uh, at best, second down and 10. I figured it'd be Phil Thomas at the bottom when they unpiled, and it turns out to be the freshman from Houston. Second and long now for Carolina, so the, the tough call has now slipped to the other side, and... Carolina knows they cannot go three and out here. You see the time winding down in the third quarter. It's 13 nothing North Carolina. The pitch to Derek Fenner. Boy, Fenner's done a nice job today. He turned that play into something by hesitating and waiting until something developed, and he's done that more than once. David Briggs and Rayotis Perkins not attacked. They don't get to be a down-yard rusher in nine ball games without having some great field vision. And Fenner has that. 13 nothing, North Carolina. Three quarters are in the book, and we'll come back for the last one from Keenan Stadium after this. Your Nissan game of the week, 13 nothing, North Carolina on top of Virginia at Keenan Stadium. And there you see the scoring rundown. North Carolina got on the board early. The long field goal specialist, Kenny Miller, getting him on the board. Derek Fenner then went 68 yards. And recently, a 24-yard field goal by Legally Armist before we closed out the third quarter brought us to that 13-0 point. North Carolina has a third down and two from its 17-yard line to start the fourth quarter. Brad Lopp, the fullback. Derek Fenner, the tailback. Mark May to throw. He completes the pass for a first down. John Keller, the tight end. And boy, a very disappointed Virginia Cavalier has got to be the man who almost got Mark May, Don Bryant. Surprising call here by North Carolina as they throw the ball on third and short yardage. Keller doing an out pattern from the tight end position. 
And May stood in there against the pressure of Don Bryan, picked up the first down out near the 25. First and 10, 24 yard lot of North Carolina. This is Brad Lopp. And Lopp is grabbed by Billy Keyes, and he got about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Billy Keyes is a sophomore, 252 pounder out of Washington, D.C. That is George Welsh seated behind one of his assistants. And that is Dick Crump. Neither one of them will be entering any track meets anytime soon. I know that's cruel. Second down and seven. Mark May got all the way at quarterback. This is Fenner. Got a great block from Pete Crowley. And Fenner in the open field. Fenner has one man to beat. Jim Fenner will score, I think. Yes, touchdown, North Carolina. Pat Crowley with the man who sprung it with a great block. And Fenner has his second one touchdown run. Derek Fenner is now within several yards of the end of the North Carolina single game record. I, I just had it in the back of my mind, Gary, as the play was unfolding, I pulled out the Carolina record book. 73 yard touchdown run for Derek Fenner, 274 yards now on the day. The, end, the North Carolina record is 286 yards in 1977 by Amos Lawrence against who? Virginia. I was wondering what you were doing with that book, but it paid off. Give credit to the freshman, though, from Hampton Bays, New York, Pat Crowley, number 51, who sprung him, as I'm sure we'll see on the replay. May will hold for the Armas to add the point, and it is now North Carolina 20, Virginia nothing. He's like a runaway freight train I mentioned earlier. You've got that big body, 222-pound sophomore. He turns the corner here. Good block up front. And that springs him loose. And now you're talking about a man among boys in the secondary. He's just shedding tacklers all over the place. Kevin Gould, the last man trying to hit him, and he got some help fender from Eric Streeter, although I don't think he needed it anyway. Well, the hill just became a lot steeper for Virginia. It's 20 to nothing, North Carolina. Back after this for your local ACC stations. Twenty to nothing, North Carolina now leading Virginia early fourth quarter. A great running back loves an offensive line that gives him a little extra. Watch number 51, Pat Crowley. He is pulling on the play for Finner. The left side of your screen, he pops the cornerback, Kevin Cook, and that's what center fin set, set Derek Finner off to the races for a 73 yard touchdown. There is Kenny Miller to boot it off. Chris Warren back deep at his five-yard line to receive it, but it's now 20 to nothing for North Carolina. Taken instead by Finkelston at his 15. Finkelston's going to run about 80 yards lateral in here and get up to the 30-yard line for about a 15-yard return. And the tackle was made by Brian Causey for Virginia, and a flag is down as well. Flag back around the 20-yard line, which... There's Derek Fenner. Call, according to Bob Carpenter, was against North Carolina. Perhaps a personal foul of some kind. Five-yard infraction. They must have grabbed the face mask of a blocker. Will Malvern. Grasping. Exactly by the face mask in the middle. He figures you said the rest of it, so. Well, the question here is, well, now Bob Carpenter is going to let us know. <laughs> Grass food face mask on the blue, five-yard penalty. Only a five-yard infraction because it was away from the ball. It was not directly involved in the play. But a little question as to what uh, Virginia is going to do now. Down by 20 points, they're going to have to put the ball in the air. 35-yard line, their own 35. The man with the clean jersey is Scott Seacuel. This is only his second series. Relatively clean, anyway. Wide open. I think it's Mattioli or Finkelston. It's uh, Mattioli. Told you the black gloves. Yeah, right, the black gloves. I got to forget the number. 33-yard line of North Carolina. First down, Virginia. Big play. 32 yards. Keith Mattioli is a great story for Virginia. Walk on, not very big. 5'11", 175. He's had a sensational final year of college football. That is about his third or fourth catch of the day. At least. His fifth. He's now yeah. got 41 on the season. 
First and ten from the 33 of North Carolina. It's 20 to nothing, the Tar Heels. Ezekiel's got as much out of it as he could, and it didn't turn out to be a bad gain. About six or seven yards before Tim Goad brought him down. Talk about a good day. How about 274 yards and 27 carries? Even in my mathematics, that's 10 yards a carry. There's the race for the rushing title. Keep in mind that it now Terrence that Flagler has to play yet, so right. he's got a chance it. to overtake Mr. Benner. Of course, they still have games yet to play, too. Second down at five, and there's not a whole lot there for Derwin Greggs. Brett Rudolph made the stop. It'll be third down. We have 12.34 and the clock winding down. Final period, Virginia three touchdowns in arrears of the Tar Heels. NC State winning over Duke to keep their hopes alive for an ACC title share. And North Carolina with a 20-point lead on George Welsh's Cavaliers is going to do likewise. Well, the gauntlet has been handed to Clemson. The Tigers will have to win the ACC this afternoon. It won't be given to them. Sequel going for the end zone for Mattioli. It's knocked away. A flag is down. We make an interference on Jimmy Alkier. And Yauk is really upset. Derek Donald shoving him away from he the official on that side. Pass interference, the call. Ezekiel's is going deep for Mattioli up the sidelines. He is behind Derek Donald, but Yauk is the free safety, breaking on the ball well. Good call by the official. Good call by the official. I don't know what he was upset about. Contact was made before the ball got there. It's a 15-yard infraction and an automatic first down. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards and first down. Looking at that live, it was hard to tell. But the replay definitely showed the good call by the officials. State two touchdowns up on Duke. North Carolina nine penalties now for 75 yards. Virginia only five yards in penalties, but North Carolina leads 20 to nothing. First and 10, Cavaliers at the 13. Not much there for Derwin Greggs, only to the 10. And Rich White on the tackle as you look at Scott Seacules. Certainly one of the things that the Virginia coaching staff is going to address itself to during the offseason in terms of their recruiting and in terms of their spring practice, Gary, is better proficiency on offense, finishing off drives. We've talked about it today and earlier this season. That's been the real Achilles heel this year. Second down, eight. Seacule's under pressure. Guess who? Well, he got it off that time. And at the five, and a touchdown, I think, for John Ford. Yes, touchdown, John Ford. Carlton Bailey looked like he was going to wrap up Seacules, as he's been doing much of the day, but Seacules got it off to John Ford, and it's 20 to 6. A gutty play by the junior from Centerville, Virginia. As you look at John Ford after his fifth touchdown season, Scott Seacules stood in there, took a heck of a shot from Carlton Bailey. Now you will have Jeff Gaffney on to try for the extra point. Keep in mind with a 20 now, 20 to 6 score, they can keep going for the single point of the conversion. Gaffney adds point number 7. A lot of time left, 11.29 remaining in the game. Don't think for a moment Dick Crum and his staff are breathing that easily. It's 20 to 7 now, Virginia trailing North Carolina. We'll be back. Virginia puts its first points on the board here in the fourth quarter. Scott Seacules is looking for John Ford to slide across the field. He is in heavy traffic. He is really wrapped up by Bailey as he got rid of the football. Ford made the catch, and as we've talked about, he's an electrifying player, and he got it in the end zone. Look at Seacules. He knows he's going to get popped here. He says, where are you, John? Get rid of it, and down he goes. And i got to get up. What happened? End zone? All right, I love it. 20 to 7, and a happy Scott Seacules, who has hit all three of his passes since coming out here in the second half for 55 yards and a touchdown. Now Jeff Gaffney will kick off. North Carolina's gone back to that 13-point lead. Torin Dorn is back deep to receive, standing at his three-yard line. Talk about how great a day Derek Benner's had. Dorn was one of the most highly recruited tailbacks in the country, so they've got a good one behind them. 
This one, when they go out of bounds, and they'll have to kick it off again from the 30 this time. Dorn is out of Southfield, Michigan, by the way. Look at that. Minnesota on top of uh, Michigan, 14 to 10. Well, of course, as we mentioned earlier, Gary, Michigan and Ohio State meet next week for the Big Ten Championship, and you know those teams are, are looking ahead to that game. They start practicing for that game two and three weeks before it takes place. Well, the Bowl Scouts from the Fiesta and the uh, Citrus Bowl are doing cartwheels over that score if Minnesota should happen to beat Michigan since they want to get the number one and number two teams matched up, Penn State and Miami. Provided that Penn State gets by Notre Dame this afternoon. Right. Well, Carolina knows they've got to crank it up again because Virginia's got some life, and Mississippi trying to keep its SEC title hopes alive. Terribly, terribly disappointing season for Johnny Majors and Tennessee. Gaffney will boot it off. Dorn will start from his 15th. about a 21 yard return up to the 36 yard line they'll actually mark him up to the 37 that is where north carolina will have it first and ten jim sanford was the man who made the stop for the cavaliers we have i'm sorry jack i was going to say virginia will i think start to try and do some gambling on defense they'll blitz a little more they'll try and mix up what they're doing in hopes of getting a Carolina mistake to get the ball back for their offense. Let's see if North Carolina goes conservative or if they balance it out on this series. First and ten. On first down, they go to Fenner. Fenner, been a good man to go to all day. Gets nine more yards before David Cardenas brought him down. It'll be second down and one. David Cardenas in the ball game, replacing Kevin Cook. Cook had a slight concussion last week against NC State and after getting popped by Pat Crowley on Fenner's 70 three-yard run. Perhaps it's acting up a little bit again. Second and one. Fenner not far from 300 yards on the day. This is James Thompson gets the first down to keep the chains moving at the 49-yard line of Virginia. Carolina is nearing 400 yards on the ground as a team. Carolina is number two in the ACC in rushing offense. They've done well on the ground. They haven't always converted it, though. They're fifth in scoring offense. That's Quint Smith on the North Carolina sideline. And I guess they were trying to show us Dick Crumb, but... Somebody said, hey, Quint, back up a little bit. So they said, oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. We've got people all over this place. First down and ten. This is Derek Fenner. Fenner got about two more yards. It'll be second and eight. An attack was made by Roy Brown, the freshman at Washington, D.C. Which goes to the Carolina record for a single game running the football, 286 yards, 1977 by Amos Lawrence. And Mr. Fenner needs about three or four more yards, four, three more yards, to be the new man in that category for the Tar Heels. 10-23 left to go, winding down, second down and eight for North Carolina. Fenner again to the 45-yard line, and a big play coming up. It will be third down and five, and if North Carolina doesn't get the first down, well, then Virginia will get the ball back with still about 10 minutes remaining. Well, I had the privilege, Gary, when I played college football, to be on the same team with Ed Marinero when he set the, the, the NCAA records at that time. I tell you, when you are playing with a great athlete, and a guy like Fenner definitely fits that category, has now set the new record for Carolina. He gives you a boost. You just are so impressed by their abilities. Third down five. Mark May after play action. No, he gave it to Fenner. Fenner went nowhere. Fourth down. A tackle made by Sean Scott. Lock moving with nine and a half to go. Enough time for the Cavaliers. We're down 13, but we'll get the ball back. Well, obviously, from Carolina's point of view, they wanted to get the first down on the ground. They wanted to keep the clock rolling. They wanted to wear down the Virginia defense. Unfortunately, people like Sean Scott had other ideas, and Virginia comes up with a big defensive play, and they at least keep their hopes alive. Kenny Miller will punt. Kevin Gould is back deep to receive. Gould lets it go. 
And Carolina finally downs one of those Kenny Miller punts inside the five-yard line. They have been threatening to do that all day. Number 34 for North Carolina. Oh, Richie Milligan was the guy who first touched. He actually made first contact with the ball out at the six-yard line, so that's where they will spot it. But they have really backed up Virginia. North Carolina is 94 yards away. It's 20-7. to seven. North Carolina leads it over Virginia. Atlantic Coast Conference football coming your way Saturday, November 22nd. The Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech takes on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Next week, Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. And boy, what John Dillbury has done with the Ramblin' Wreck. All young players early in the year having their problems, but now they're a couple of games above 500. We knew he had the talent. They've really gotten it going. They got some bowl hopes yet. First and ten, Virginia here at their six-yard line. They're 13 points down, still most of the fourth quarter to go. About a five-yard gain for Derwin Briggs on first down. 8.48 left to go in the ball game. Ron Burton on the stop there for North Carolina. The clock a definite factor now for Virginia because of the field position. It's really going to dictate what they're going to call here. They've got to go for the bigger plays. They can't afford to do this in five, six, or seven-yard chunks. they got to think in terms of... 15, 20, 25-yard plays. Scott Seacules has thrown a touchdown pass to John Ford. He has a second down and six here. He's going for Ford again, and Ford can get called for offensive pass interference. There will be no, there's the flag. It was a very obvious offensive pass interference call. Derek Donald upset for North Carolina that the flag didn't come down sooner. Derek Donald with good coverage. We saw a couple of weeks ago when James... Milling outran the Carolina coverage. I tell you what, I mean, it's an inadvertent bump. You could have people going the other way with that one, too, because Donald really was impeding Ford's progress up the field. Inadvertently, he took his two arms and pushed him Yeah, around. but first there was the contact between the two players and then the push. All right. Granted, that's We're not going to get into another one this week. <laughs> Maybe we can see it again. I might have gone with a no call there. Well, I thought it was a good call. Offensive fast interference, half the distance, and loss of down. The killer third penalty. down. Watch the contact again. As Ford, well, we're not really going to be able to tell as well as from our other angle. See, as Ford's trying to get upfield. Donald cuts him off, and then that's when the contact came about. Third down and long for Virginia. Seacules has the pass complete to Mattioli, and Mattioli has a first down at the 25-yard line, and Virginia's hopes stay alive on a 15-yard completion. Well, the clutch receiver, Keith Mattioli, has been all afternoon on a day in which the conditions have been less than ideal. I don't think he's dropped the ball all afternoon. There is a final score. Eric Kramer has set a new school passing record at North Carolina State, 43-46. That's a lot of yards. And State still alive for a share of the ACC crown if Maryland knocks off Clemson later today. Zeke Jewell, quick pass to Kevin Ferguson. Ferguson in the open field. And across the 40 and down to the 35-yard line of North Carolina. Great play call by the Virginia offensive staff. They had been running the fullback on the dives on first down. Now they run the dump pass. You fake the dive and dump it to the tight end on the backside. A 41-yard pass. Walter Bailey finally chases down Kevin Ferguson. But now you got a much different perspective on this ball. Game. you got a very different perspective. 35-yard line of North Carolina midway through the fourth period. If Virginia cashes in here, they've got a shot. Seacule has time. Wide open. Great catch. Well, there's a flag down. Daryl Hammond caught the ball, but there's a flag down back in the area where holding might turn out to be the call. Virginia's had only one penalty off all afternoon, but this one's going to hurt. Holding it is. Holding. And rather than a first down at the 15 or around the 15, Virginia instead will have a first and 20 from about the 45. See if we can pick up the penalty as it took place. The flag came right at the end of the play. Watch the right side of your screen. Tim Goad, the nose man, tried to work to that side. 
And they apparently detected somebody with a hand aligned, Tim Goat. So it negates. Sorry about that, Bob. It negates the, the good catch by Daryl Hammond down inside the 20. First and 20, 45 yard line of North Carolina, 20 to 7. The Tar Heels lead by 13. 7.22 to go in the game. CQ, wide open again, John Ford, and Ford at the 23, and Virginia receivers now, oh, they're going to say he didn't catch the football. He did not catch the football, but that doesn't change the fact that Virginia receivers in this fourth quarter are just running free. Well, they were in the two deep coverage that time, and Sequels did a good job of throwing this ball between the short man and the deep man. John Ford tried to make the diving catch. So you have the two deep safeties and the cornerbacks underneath, and there's the bubble in the middle. And Ford short hop that one. Ezekiel's 5 of 7 for 116 yards and a touchdown. Pressure on him, though, here with second down and 20. Got to make something out of his drive. With time, he completes it to Warren, but this play will get only about a yard, if that. Howard Fagans took Warren out of bounds, just figuring that the big play type performer, Warren, if you isolate him outside, maybe he'll make something of it, but Fagans did a good job. He was just the release man on the play, Warren. Sequels had nobody upfield because Carolina's secondary had good coverage. He threw it to Warren, and as you said, hoping maybe he could make something out of it, but he had little room to operate and had Howard Fagans right in his face. Here's a third down and 19. You see Virginia's percentage on conversions. That's not really all that terrible, but... Right here, they just plain have to make this one. CQ with Ron Burton putting pressure on, and it's picked off by Jim Yock. Yock back to the 34-yard line. Or Dan Vuletic, excuse me. Dan Vuletic, the freshman out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, made the interception, not Yock. Carlton Bailey and Ron Burton all afternoon have been putting tremendous heat on the Virginia quarterbacks, and the pressure up front causes the interception again. That was Ron Burton who forced Ezekiel to throw the ball wide. The interception by Vuletic and Carolina in the driver's seat. Also, Mitch White hobbling off the field, but Carolina has it back. Atlantic Coast Conference football, coming your way Saturday, November 22nd. The Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech takes on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Next week, we'll be at Winston-Salem, Georgia Tech, and Wake Forest. Looking forward to getting one more look at Mike Elkins. What a sophomore yeah. year he's had. There's Dan Bulletin, who made the interception. His dad, Milan, used to be on the coaching staff at Michigan. He's now the defensive coordinator at Rice. First down and 10 at the 35 for North Carolina. Under seven minutes to go, and they're going to run some clock. Derek Fenner slipped. Ended up getting about, well, two or three yards. It'll be second down and about seven, and Roy Brown made the stop for Virginia. They'll mark the football at the 37, second down and eight. North Carolina State has won today over Duke by two touchdowns, so State needs a victory. Well, Derek Fenner apparently has passed a major milestone. I missed the announcement, but I think well, that has it. Well, that was the the single season, the single game record. He now has 288 yards rushing on the day. Second down, eight. James Thompson, I believe. Got a couple of yards up to the 40. I know Brad, was it Lop? Yeah, Brad, Brad Lop. Lop. And fullback. As met Jim Sanford on the stop. And there it is. 288 yards, a single game rushing record for Derek Fenner. Not bad for a guy who, what, was late to practice a couple of times this week? I think Dick Crum will forgive him now. I think Dick's going to find him a chauffeur or something to make sure he gets there on time. Third down and five. After play action to Fetter. Pass to Keller, and Keller did not get the first down. Well, they're going to give him the progress to the first down. They're going to say his forward progress took him to the 45, and that'll give him the first down. Third and about five. Carolina with play action looking for the safety pass. Keller underneath the coverage. Whacked right as he caught the ball, but this ball is right 
on my line. And he's not going to get it by much, but he's got the first down. Yep. First down. The game in the Southeast Conference. Look at Tennessee. Leading Mississippi by 13 in the fourth quarter. Mississippi was trying to go to the Sugar Bowl, possibly. Now Minnesota trying to knock Michigan out of a possible Rose Bowl appearance. And national championship contention, but that's only in the third quarter. It's going to be a while before they decide that little brown jug battle today. I mentioned earlier, State has won. If Carolina goes on to win here, then those two teams go over from Maryland today. Hope they knock off Clemson. State would then at least share the title, and Carolina could share the title if they beat Duke next week. The give to Fetter, and Fetter gets about 10 more yards inside the 45 of Virginia. Now you're talking about a 300-yard day for Derek Fenner. Right about. To put him at, what, about 299? 298, 299, yeah. Of course, all the speculation we've done about the Clemson uh, game this afternoon. If Clemson wins the game, that's it. They're the undisputed ACC champions. 300 yards on the money for Derek Fenner. First one ever to do that as a Tar Heel. First and 10. Here is Fenner adding to that total with five more, or four more anyway. Second down and six. You know, Gary, made by David Griggs. Sorry, excuse David. me. We're talking about. Carolina and State still having hopes of, of a share of the ACC. Now if Clemson goes on and beats Maryland this afternoon and wins it, these games today were still important for both Carolina and State, as will be the games next week, because if Carolina finishes 7-3-1, and if State finishes 8-2-1, and you know they're going to go to bowl games as well. Dick Crum told us yesterday that he doesn't really like the idea too much of going to a bowl with six victories as they give us to Thompson, and Thompson got about a yard or two, and Jim Sanford again on the stop. Now, he would have to make that decision, obviously, when and if the invitation came if they lost next week, but he would very much just like to win next week and then with a 7-3-1 and one season be happy to take a bowl invitation. There were no bowl scouts here this afternoon, but I was told that there was some conversation yesterday with the North Carolina Athletic Department and the Hall of Fame Bowl officials, and I would think if the Heels finish at 7-3-1, and one, they certainly would deserve a bowl appearance. As you look at the timeout situation, the way things are here today, Tampa, Florida looks pretty good. Third down and four. This is Fetter. And Fetter gets the first down. And Fetter is tripped up at the 21-yard line by Mike Petten, or he might have had another score and another big gainer. As it was, he got 17 yards. Derek Fenner from Oxon Hill, Maryland, is a stud. Let's, let's be real blunt about it. This young man has got all the tools you would want to have in a tailback. Great speed, great vision on the field. Very good size. Oh, and how about number. 320 yards on the afternoon? You know, people say that, well, Carolina too much of a tailback offense. You got a kid like that. I don't blame him. 21-yard line of Virginia, first down and 10. James Thompson got four yards. Second down and six. And now 256 remains to be played. Ray Otis Perkins. We've talked today about the very young Virginia team and how George Welsh and his staff are hopeful that the learning process this year pays off in 87 and beyond. Keep in mind, too, with this Carolina team, there are not a lot of senior ball players in key positions on this team. You've got Mark May back. You've got Thompson back. You've got Fenner back. Absolutely. They're almost all juniors and sophomores. Second down and six. Fenner. Just adding to that record on almost every play now. Got three or four more. You go to the offensive line, and Harris Barton, of course, the great offensive tackle. He's the only senior on the offensive line. So you'll bring back people like Pfeiffer and Garnica and Crowley and Creighton Incorminius and Daryl Hamilton as well. Look at that, 446 yards on the ground this afternoon for North Carolina. That's got to be somewhere uh, approaching a team record for yards rushing in a game. Well, let's get the book out again and check. <laughs> I think we have time, yeah. 148 to go. Third down and two. Fenner. Nice move by him to drive ahead for the first down at the 10-yard line, and that should give well. Virginia's going to prolong the inevitable by calling a timeout here while they stop the clock to move the chains. We'll see if Virginia uses its timeouts. Well, they, they got a ways to go before they can get that. There's your North Carolina Poland player of the game. 
Derek Finner. Outstanding performance by him. Better with 320 yards when we last checked. I bet he's around, what, 320? We're getting it right now. 328 yards for Derek Fenner. And Keith Mattioli, who's had a great ball game for Virginia with six receptions and 109 yards, your Poland player of the game for Virginia. And Poland will donate a $500 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Virginia and North Carolina as part of the Poland Most Valuable Player Award Scholarship Program, Poland. America's Chainsaw. Well, almost as much as our anticipation each week about the game we were going to do on Saturday afternoon, we would always wait for our director, Jim Dussel, to arrive and say, well, has the baby been born yet? Well, finally, Catherine Helene Dussel entered the world last weekend, and we are proud to show you that little sweetheart and congratulate Jim and his wife and wish them all the best with their new daughter. Well, there must be something about North Carolina running the ball against Virginia, Gary. We talked about Derek Fenner setting the new single-game record with the 320-plus yards on the afternoon, breaking Amos Lawrence's record of 286 that he set against Virginia. One day in 1943 for the Carolina Tar Heels against Virginia, as a team, they ran for 555 yards. They must just like putting it on the ground against that orange jersey of I suppose. Virginia. First time North Carolina will have beaten Virginia in the four-year period. They've had two Virginia victories and one tie in the last three year years. Virginia hasn't won, though, at Chapel Hill since 1968. And they obviously won't win today as you look at Ray Savage, who's had a pretty good ball game well, for that, Virginia. That young man's going to be a very fine football player. Ray Savage, number 56, was the easiest player. Well, Today has been a tough day. I think this day, this afternoon, really reflects how the year has been for Virginia. They've had trouble stopping people on defense, and they've had trouble finishing off the drives on offense. And moving people out with their offensive line. That's right. George Welsh knows it. He told us yesterday, though, he's got a couple of freshman offensive linemen, true freshmen, who he puts up there in the class with Jim Dabrowski and the folks who graduated last year, and that was some unit that uh, left Virginia. Yeah, there's a couple of redshirt people who are certainly going to put the pressure on next year on that offensive front for Virginia. And they've got most of their people back. Bukowski will be gone and Mattioli will be gone, but everybody else returns of, of consequence. Antonio Rice is also going to graduate. 1.23 to go here. It's first and 10 for North Carolina. Mark Mays got all the way at quarterback. He's still there. Derek Fenner. This time, not a whole lot there for him. May have lost a yard. Roy Brown on the tackle. Jim Sanford helping out. There'll be less than a minute to go when this next play begins. So once again, the attention turns northward up to Baltimore, Maryland. We're in about 15 minutes or so. Clemson and Maryland will get at it. Second down, 12. Fenner lost two on that play. Fenner again. Got back the two he lost and maybe a half yard to spare. That could be the final play of the game depending upon when they set the ball for play. They have not yet set it, and so that means that could be the final play of the game. One well, wait a minute now. Now Virginia's going to call timeout, are they? Yeah. Well, to talk again for a moment, Gary, about the game upcoming, which had, which has greater consequence now because of the North Carolina victory here and the NC State victory. Interesting comment yesterday at practice from Dick Crum about. Clemson and Maryland. He said, you know, when those two teams play, they really don't like each other, and he thinks that's going to be a factor in the game coming up here in just a few moments. Our thanks to our great Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions crew, Jim Doozle and Quasi Star, Jimmy Rayburn, congratulations Tennessee, Jimmy Ed Wade and Charles Boyd. Terry DeCarlos always does a great job on the technical side of things. Dave Johnson on the audio with Jim McCullough and the rest of the group. Up here in the booth, we thank John Mondry, our outstanding statistician, and Tony Britt, who points out the players to me from week to week. Pete Redpath and Lisa Langley have been with us most of the year as uh, stage managers. 
and what the production people have to do. Just a little bit extra. You think it's hard to play a football game in the cold and rain. There's no picnic to move this equipment around and handle it in the sloppy weather as well. So, folks, thanks very much for a good job again today. 21 seconds left here. They're sort of like offensive linemen. They never get the credit they deserve either. Harris Dickrum has to feel a little bit better about things with a victory here today over Virginia. That's Jonathan Hall, who I don't know how he feels, to be quite honest about it. He started the first five ball games of the year. They were 4-0-1. Mark May came back, and Dick Crum will tell you he has two starting quarterbacks. And one of them has gone all the way today. Mark May now has it back to throw, throwing to the end zone, and throws a touchdown pass to Eric Streeter. Now, I must admit I didn't expect that, but I guess Dick Crum didn't expect the timeout. I don't know. The flag in the end zone, too. I, I think had Virginia not called the timeout, they would have let the clock run down. Keep in mind, this is Eric Streeter's final ball game at Keenan Stadium. All right, I'll, I'll take that, I guess. They have penalized Streeter for spiking the football. Guess where they went, though, inside the 20. A corner route. Great catch by Streeter. And the penalty was the celebration, so the touchdown counts. Well, it is 26 to 7 with the extra point to come. There's the penalty right there. You can't do that until you're in the pros, Eric. That was almost unsportsmanlike conduct before you spiked it. 21 seconds left in the game. 26 to 7, Carolina. And Legally Armist will add the extra point. Yeah. Now Bob Carpenter is going to explain to the Carolina coaching staff what took place. I guess. <laughs> well, Bob Carpenter may be trying to find his way back to his uh, appointed spot on the field. So we're going to follow him and see where he's going. Oh, there we go. He wants to get the clock moving. We have not, not get the time taken off the clock. Ah, the clock never started on that play. Well, it did. Uh, it did. It, the clock was stopped. Was it stopped at 21 seconds? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shades of the Wolfpack and Gamecocks a few weeks ago. That's another story, though. 21 seconds left here. The clock didn't start. You know, I guess, I guess if Virginia calls a timeout and wants to prolong play, North Carolina has every right to go and try and score the touchdown. And the, the fact, as I said, it's Eric Streeter's final ball game. Perhaps they just take five seconds off the clock. That's what Bob Carpenter is saying. And perhaps uh, Carolina, following you up on your thought, Gary, said, hey, if they're going to make us do it, we're going to try and, and give a senior one more moment of glory in front of the home folks. But the flip side of that is a play like that can come back to haunt yeah. you in future years. Well, I'm glad you said that because I've been, I've been holding that back for the last uh, two, three minutes or so. Mark May will hold. Legally, Armas will kick. Looking at point number 27. At least they're not going for two. You also have to consider the fact, too, Gary, that for some of these Carolina kids, it's the first time they have beaten Virginia in their Carolina career. That is right. The last three years, you're absolutely right. Twenty-seven, seven after the kick by Leonis. We'll have time for the kickoff and one or two plays. Well, next week we've got Georgia Tech and Wake Forest with our regular season finale. As you look at Dick Crum talking things over on the sideline and. Yes, as you said, the fourth ball game next week against uh, the Duke Blue Devils. What a balanced league we had this year. There just is not a doormat in the league this year. We've had some, some great offensive efforts by by all the teams in the league this year. There's some great skill on the offensive side of the football. And, and, and really, Gary, I think in, in terms of, of 1987, as all these coaches prep in the offseason, I think that the key next year is going to be the team that can become a little more dominant on defense has got to be considered the front runner for the 87 ACC title. 
There's Derek Fenner. What a great day he had. 328 yards. What does that work out to? That's about better than seven yards a carry. In fact, about eight yards a carry. Eight yards a carry. You know, talking to a couple of assistant coaches in the last few weeks, a lot of people feel that Clemson is not only the team of present, but might be the team of the future, as young as they are, and as well as they've done this year. they got to come up with somebody to take the place of Terrence Flagler and, and Kenny Flowers. They're right. using a couple of very fine tailbacks after this 86 season. But North Carolina will have almost everybody back. You know Virginia is going to be better. Duke, that freshman class, will have a year of uh, experience or at least red shirt in some cases. So Wake Forest, if they can come up with a receiver to replace James Grimm, will have a lot of, a lot of skill, skill with back, uh, yeah. Mike Elkins. I'm looking forward again to seeing Mike Elkins next week for Wake. Well, North Carolina was penalized, remember, for that celebration. And so they will kick off with 16 seconds to go. Kenny Miller sends it toward the sideline, and uh, now he will kick it from the 15-yard line. What would happen if they got to the five and he kicked it out of bounds? Keep going half the distance. Half the distance, that's what I think. I bet that hasn't happened. No, I can't I've say I've never even speculated it. on it before. <laughs> Somebody's probably thought about it. They just didn't say it out loud. <laughs> oh. 27-7, North Carolina on top of Virginia. Tar Heels led 10-0 after one, and Virginia made a move in the third period to get within 13 and had the ball back, but an interception by Danny Bulatich really was the straw that broke the camel's back today. And North Carolina's added a couple of scores, or at least a score since then. <laughs> Low kick. Warren couldn't handle it cleanly. Here he comes. Warren with a stiff arm. Flag is down. The naysay he grabs a face mask going out of bounds. We'll see. Victor Bullock on the tackle, and nine seconds remain to be played. Pushed down by Victor Bullock. Is that holding? Yeah. So with the victories by Carolina here and NC State, State has done with their conference schedule at 5-2. and two. Carolina is 4-2, and two, and a Clemson, of course, uh, getting ready to play against Maryland with that 5-1 and one mark. So if Clemson wins, they win the title with the 6-1 and one record. If they lose and Carolina wins next week against Duke, we could have the first ever tri-champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Up to the line come the Cavaliers with nine seconds left. Scott Seacules can run at least one and maybe two plays. Going up top, but it's all Carolina Blue back there, and the interception number two for Dan Bulatich. And that is your ball game. The final score, the North Carolina Tar Heels 27, the Virginia Cavaliers 7. Back with more after this for your local ACC station.